Southland dangerous storm is on the move this morning. Millions more across the country facing winter weather alerts and brutal conditions impacting travel on the roads and in the air. Al's got your full forecast. Then speaking out, fitness icon Richard Simmons breaking his silence. Get ready to sweat. Why he's calling out an upcoming film project on his life. All the details straight ahead. Plus, reporting for duty. Hi, I'm Captain Benson, SVU. Mariska Hargitay is here celebrating 25 years of Law & Order SVU. We'll talk about the highly anticipated new season. I won't turn my back on any victim. We get these guys. And catch up with her as she nears her own personal milestone. And pass the map. The new study just out that says men really are better with directions than women. And the reason why may surprise you. Today, Thursday, January 18th, 2024. On a mother daughter trip to the Today Show from Nova Scotia. Premiering show Ohio, Ben turns 21 today. <laughs> Celebrating 15 years of friendship from San Jose, California. So sick of Good morning to my friends Chelsea, Michaela, in Atlanta. Sending love to my parents. Watching in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Here to celebrate India's 55th birthday. All the way from Aruba. She's over there. Thank you. Marta mm -hmm. Stevens? Yes. Detective Olivia Benson, New York City Police Department. Oh. How can I help you? Why don't we see you? We there? want to see oh. you. That was your first moment. Very oh. first. Very first episode of Law and Order SVU back in 1999. A quarter century <laughs> and more than 500 episodes later, it is now the longest running primetime drama in history, and it's made Mariska an Emmy and Golden Globe winner for her roles as Captain Olivia Benson. So we've got a lot to talk yes, to Mariska about, but first, let's do a little, well, now we got to roll the future. We showed your baby pictures. Yeah. Now, <laughs> season 25, tonight is the premiere. Roll it. What are we looking at? Maddie Flynn, 15. Parents lost sight of her about an hour ago. Hey, who saw her last? Mom swears she was with her dad. The way he tells it, she went to check out with mom. All right, any witnesses? It's like she vanished. Storage pulling security footage. Captain, Sergeant, something you should see. I found it stashed in the men's room. I think that's connected. Well, it couldn't hurt to run it through Nibin. Check its provenance. Marisha, Come on. Good morning. Look at you. Good morning. 25 yeah. years. Can we just give you an, oh, I mean, yes. that is incredible. The longest running character mm -hmm. in television, I believe, once this premieres tonight, mm -hmm. female character. When you just saw that back to back, yeah. first day and tonight's <laughs> premiere, what do you think about the character and you and that evolution? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, it's, it's so beautiful to have the privilege to actually watch the evolution mm. and as i see it and look back it's um you know olivia benson is sort of a perfect feminist story right because we actually see this woman grow into her power and you use the word swagger and that's exactly what it is just owning all of those parts of ourselves and i and especially you that little voice, yeah. that little voice. Olivia Benson. Yeah, it was that little voice that has just <laughs> blossomed in. And, and for that, I'm, I'm so grateful. And has Mariska been on that same journey? Yeah. Absolutely. Tell yeah. us, yeah. You know, it's been incredible. You know, I, I, was, I was just thinking the other day, um, because it's hard to process, right? Everyone's saying 25 years, 25 years. And... I am so grateful for this time in my life to be present for all of it. Because mm -hmm. you look at that, and and you weren't. I wasn't present for all of it. It goes so fast. Yeah. You know, it goes so fast. But now, as we get older, I have so much room to be present and hold everything that's going on, mm -hmm. but with compassion and love. And it's very. It's a very different experience. Wow. I feel like your life is textbook. It gets greater later. Like all oh. the good things. All the good things yeah. started happening in your 40s. It was truly, a, right? mm -hmm. truly let's say, truly. list them off. What happened in your 40s? What things happened? What well, things? I got yeah. married. Yeah. <laughs> I had my first child. Yeah. I won my first Emmy. <laughs> and I just, that was the beginning of sort of stepping into myself. 
you know, and obviously I know you know that my birthday's coming up and I am so excited about it. And I don't think I've ever been more excited about a birthday. This is the theme because you're turning 60, right? Yes. And we had Jamie Lee Curtis on oh, being 60. Did you, wait, do you, by the way, so, you guys are, are besties. Well, Jamie and I, ironically, interestingly, we met recently and it was one of these things where um, we had a mutual friend and uh, I wanted to talk to her and then she called me and we stayed on the phone for, I don't know, an hour and just went, like took the elevator down Aww. so deep, so quickly. And by the end of it, it was, where have you been all my life? I love you. <laughs> um, now we're texting each other. Aww. And I would say she is somebody that, um, that I feel most connected to. She's talking about that kind of yeah. spaciousness, spaciousness that you feel at this moment yeah. in time. And she's yeah. embodying her 60s. And as you tiptoe into your 60s, like you said, this is... This is like cause for celebration. It is cause, and what it's what what it is is inhabiting, owning all of ourselves, mm. and having the space to love and appreciate all of these things that we may have exercised or judged. But the idea is is owning it and having compassion. It's almost like a maternal feeling that we mm -hmm. have with all our different parts and mm. pieces. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's what's so exciting now. Well, this was such a, I mean, there were so many big moments for you recently. Mm. And I know you talked about this a lot, but in People Magazine, you brought up this important part of your life that you kept yeah. hidden away, that you were raped a, a, a long time ago. But wounds are still there and you finally named it. And yes. that was the part of the article that struck me yeah, the most. It. You said it out loud. Mm -hmm. You made excuses about it. Maybe it wasn't that. It yeah. wasn't such a big deal. But why was that so important to call it out? Well, it, it's interesting. One of my best friends on this earth um, for the last couple of years, and, and she's somebody who turned 60 recently. Her name is Regina. And she would always say to me, she just grabbed me and said, Mariska, name everything. Mm. Name it. Mm. And when she first said it, I, I wasn't even sure that I fully understood it. Mm. But, you know, there's moments in our life where people give us these gifts of wisdom mm. and then we grok them, right? The penny drops. Mm. And it was so important for me to write that article for that reason exactly, to name it. But also, I said, a man raped me. I wasn't raped. A man raped me. Yeah. There's a big difference. Yeah. And I thought Liz McNeil, I'm just going to say it, talk about naming things, at People Magazine handled it with such grace and respect and tenderness and the way that any survivor should be dealt with in our society. And it was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. And I felt that they were exemplary with how this subject should be de dealt with. And I'm really grateful and I honor them for that. And how does that this process contribute to your healing? Because healing can take a long time and a lifetime yeah. and sometimes it feels like it can happen instantaneously. Yeah, you know, I think it's a matter of physics, right? There's like, um, if we hold a weight, it's very heavy, right? But if it's sand and we all hold a piece of it and we carry it for each other in our society, it's not as heavy. And so for me, naming it was um, really powerful and um, I feel lighter and it was time not to carry that. And it took um, a certain maturity and compassion and I was listened to and, and most importantly, I listened to myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I urge people to do is honor and listen, really listen to that little inner voice that we all carry. And um, she'll guide you. <laughs> well, this is your beautiful legacy yeah. and life's work, oh. Mariska. It's Mariska and also as Olivia Benson, yeah. oh, who we love you. so much. We love thank you so you. much. What a beautiful conversation. Wow. You, man, you almost are about to get out of here without Hoda and I bugging you about Stabler and Benson. <laughs> Getting together because you know That's even so funny you even, never mentioned that. No, I know. But listen, Ice T wants it to happen. Is oh, all I'm I know. telling you. I heard. So give the people what they want. Wait a minute. Can we just talk about your sweet bow? Can we talk about Wait, your sweet bow? Yes. Look real quick. Okay, turn, look yes. at Marcia's cute hair. Two. Okay. Okay. Three. Turn. turn. Can we go in for coverage, people? Please? We got a bow here.
and we got a bow there. Do you know we're doing a segment on bows this morning? I bows love that. And happening. You, and you're our inspo. <laughs> well, can I tell you who my inspo yeah. is? So I just um, found this photo of my mother when she was eight years old. And I brought it today. Oh, look at her bows. <laughs> oh my look God. Look at her bows. And oh it God. just undid me, this photo of this little precious girl. Mm. And I was like, you are my inspiration. Oh. <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> Everything about it. But There's you're, so you're in your also aura. my inspiration oh, no. because <laughs> I saw your bows. I've been watching it's you, Savannah. But we gotta get hoes in the bows, don't uh, you think? Hoes in the. I told her go can't dress, handle isn't a bow. Great to dress no, no, no. Like Here's the deal. Girls. You don't. You don't this put yourself in a box. You wear a bow and you rock. Yeah, it, you baby. rock that bow. You rock a bow. You know what? You know what you do when you're 60? What? Rock a bow. Rock, rock a bow. bow. Pigtails, right. can I get a hello? Yeah, hello. <laughs> hello. We're pigtails and rock a well, bow. Robert. Oh, Mariska, we love you love so you. much you're and amazing. admire you deeply, deeply. The oh, 25th beautiful. season of mm. Law & Order SVU. What an accomplishment. It kicks off tonight, dun dun, 9, 8 central. She yeah, right here at NBC. Yeah. Olivia Benson does not rock no, a bow. No, does she does not. <laughs> What time is oh, it now? Right. Best time of the morning. Right. That is pop star. Uh, I want you. Pink is in the And I miss you so much. They're delicious. Bam! Garcet! 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 Everybody, 8.30 now on a beautiful Thursday morning. And by beautiful, we mean really, really, really cold. But look at these people out here. Woo! On our plazas, we say good morning. We say hi, Grant. Oh, gosh, it's awesome to have everybody here. All right, so this is such a fun show. Didn't you love that interview yes. with Mariska? Oh, she's amazing. But, so what you guys were talking about, the bow situation, it's about to be real from Savannah to Mariska to a lot of other people. Bows are back. They're perfect for special occasions, for any occasion, really, for any age. And Elle's digital director, Claire Stern, will show us how to pull off the hottest looks. How heads. Where did bows go? Well, I don't, well you know, like when I was a, you know, in college, yeah, sorority girls were like bow heads. You'd be like, oh, such a bow head. Oh, well, really? we're, we're, you guys, oh, bow head know. nation is back. Oh, okay. yes. yes. Who knew? Hardly okay. wait. Uh, also <laughs> back today, <laughs> Chef Mike Solomonov whipping up a restaurant-worthy weeknight dinner that your family's going to absolutely love. We don't do a lot of this, but I'm excited for steak. Kebab. Oh, yeah. you're wrong with pieces of beef. Yeah. Oh. Is that what's like? Oh. The crowd goes yeah. wild. Oh. Oh. You're so cold. Speaking yeah. of cooking, uh -oh. uh, 90 million Ooh. people have watched Teeny make that mac and cheese that you see right there. 90 million people Baby. have watched watch him uh, make it on TikTok. So we had to bring her in the studio on A to share her okay. secrets. The super viral, super cheesy dish no one can resist tomorrow on today. But is it as good as Betty Jo Melvin's? I don't know. We'll have to find oh. out. Mother's mac and you'll be, twice, you'll be the judge. Thank you. And it's no. incredible. Thank you. Craig, you made my the answer good. is no. no. I, you said it. The no. answer it is, is no. no.
welcome to today. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. We're just getting started, folks. Your question's almost better than mine. <laughs> what can fans expect? Us forgetting lyrics. <laughs> Greg loves to say Friday. There it is. Friday. Welcome back. This morning on Today's Style, why, where's Hoda? No, it's our segment. I don't know. I yeah. don't know anything about bows. I, I don't you are in this bow. segment, I and you are probably going to end up in a bow before okay, we're I've done. I've never, ever it's rocked a bow. It's the hottest hair accessory that has everyone in knots, the bow, Hoda. <laughs> we couldn't get enough of your recent look. I've been loving oh. your bow style look. Then today, it was like the perfect storm. Marishka yes. had a bow on. Claire Stern, Elle's digital director, is here to walk us through the hair bow trends and how to meet the moment. First of all, I cannot believe this moment happened on the show. Everything was just, it was meant to end on this segment it's right bow here. Destiny. It it's is. Bow destiny. But so, okay, so here's the thing. I mean, bows are super cute, but I'm sure many people are like, what is a 52 year old woman, in my <laughs> case, doing wearing like a bow that's, yeah. you know, you think of bow, you think of being kind of young. Yes. And, yeah maybe even 20. So can anyone rock a bow? Absolutely. It's <laughs> definitely a nostalgia fueled trend, but the bow craze really originated on the runways. So designers like Simone Rocha and Sandy Liang, and then trickled to the red carpet. We recently saw it on Riley Keough at the Emmys. It's really a trend for everyone. Sarah Jessica That's has a, like had a, a humongous yeah. statement bow. bow. So pretty. Okay. So what are we seeing yeah. on the table? Like what are the different incarnations? So many ways to wear them. You have Susan Alexander over here, Jennifer Bear. You would nice love this. Oh, yeah. Look at this issue. Can I have, can I just uh -huh. upgrade right now? You can now? just clip that on. Okay. I think I will. Wait, that's okay. cool. Wait, what's a good bow for hoads? I can't. Who doesn't? Who really hair. doesn't want to wear a bow? How would I wear a bow? Oh, a little headband. A little no, headband. That's not good. No, no, she's lost not. in this mop. Okay. There's no way. <laughs> there is really something for everyone okay. here. You've got clips, Wait, berets, around, around, bigger around. bows, I need this. bows. No. Is it good? That is cute. You're, okay. you're, you're going to own okay, that bow. I need it. Okay. So okay. sparkly. All right. Shall we yeah. look at some of our beautiful models and yeah, let's go just, through some I of the cool trends brain. while she let's goes through? Let's definitely look. Okay, so these, by the way, these are all yes. adorable Today Show staff. Come on, this Haley. Is Haley Come Walker. on, Haley. Now, this is cute. This is a bow scrunchie. Here, yeah, show it off there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There yes. you go. High hair, high hopes. <laughs> this bow scrunchie by Lily Sudugi is definitely a cheat code for the trends. So you can pull your hair up into a nice yeah, I could do that. high ponytail and it just... You know, instantly turns a lazy hair day into a cool updo. Okay. I, mean, I just want to try it. It doesn't you, This work. is not you. This looks like Hello Kitty. But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, look, it's a work in progress. Okay, okay, Haley, I love the bow, but. It looks really cute. Okay. All right, let's go to Katie. Next, here, it's around. <laughs> oh, very then, cute. Katie right. Stilo, we all know from yes. Today Food Stylist. Tell me about your bow. Oh, it's on the side. That's of course, cute. on the side. Subtle. See, subtle. that's subtle. Maybe that's your look. No, not for me. It looks good <laughs> so on So what Katie. is this, like a barrette? Yes. Okay. These are barrettes from Anthropology. Ooh. And Savannah, I know we're at your place of work, so you're a pro in this category. <laughs> but we clip two to the side on a part right here, these little wisps of hair, and it just Let's makes see. any look instantly coquettish. I love that. You're it, coquettish. It, I feel like an American Girl doll. <laughs> you are. Ooh. I think you it's really, really sweet, are. and I don't think it's too, too. No, it's not, no. no. Just yeah. a little touch. Okay. okay. Uh, now, over uh, here, we have a beautiful long bow which I've never gotten to, oh, let's swivel you around. So Hi. This long bow, you might know the brand Hill House from the viral map dress. They've gotten into the bow game. So here we have a long, elegant bow that just makes your look polished and yes. this half updo. And is this just gorgeous. for girls with long hair, gorgeous hair? It can, long hair definitely yeah. goes with What it. about short hair girls? No. Could we wear a bow like that? I think it's better no. for long hair, but really, no. No. you know, choose your own adventure. Okay, when it that's comes a no. beautiful here. That, no. Okay, be thank you. Around. Beautiful. And then oh. finally, this is a blingy bow. Let's go. This is a blingy bow. So this one is a bit of a splurge at over a hundred dollars by Susan Alexandra, handmade in New York City. I would clip it to the top, and it just adds a bit of drama. Well, you know what? It's like you could wear something super plain and wear that bow. And, you, and it would exactly. be amazing. One. Have we sold you on it, Hoda? Uh, maybe I'll try one, but how would I wear it? Pull your hair yeah, How would you do? I think you. what I would do is what? do Go. like a little half up, half down cuteness. Like, like see how it's like a partial updo? It. Okay. Yeah, and like that. And then put the little bow. Okay. I'm going to fix your hair. We're going to show okay, it out when we'll we come back. back. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claire. Thank you, Thank you Claire so from Elle Magazine. Thank you so much. You can find all of these products on today.com slash shop. Let's turn around and see your cute face. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> all right, Carson, where are you? 
Well, I'm going to take your five minutes of TV Botox and we're going to raise it five minutes of delicious steak kebab talk. We've got the one and only Mike Solomonov here. Chef has made a restaurant worthy steak dinner and you can make it too from your own kitchen. That's coming up at first. This is today on NBC. We're back with Today Food. If you're looking to tweak that usual dinner menu, we've got some recipes to shake up your routine. James Beard award-winning chef Michael Solomonov is here. We've got beef kebabs and hummus that you can make at home inspired by his popular restaurant, Laser Wolf Chef. Great to have you here. Hey, thanks so much how's, for having uh, me. How's business? Or everything is good at the restaurant? Business is great. We're doing great. We're having a really good time. I also have to say you crushed my last name right now. Oh, I did? You did so well. So, Lamar. so well. I'm glad I got your name and right. I really, That's an important part of television. It's so, so good. Nobody ever does. And really? I just uh, I'm honored. Special I'm honored. shout out. All right, so listen, we're going to make some beef, beef shish leek, yep. all right, which are cubes of beef. Now, you can use chicken, you can use beef, you can use mushroom, you can use whatever you want. But what we want to make is this fantastic marinade, right. which is harissa, red peppers, onions, a little bit of garlic, and some tomato paste. They're already eating down there. I know. Not that's that's sign, right? on her second plate already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good, Michael. Um, they Thank get up so early. Much. Yeah. By the way, Laser Wolf is one of the best restaurants in New York City. Yeah. The whole thing is an experience. I appreciate that. I highly that. recommend anyone go there. Listen, yeah. I, I'm happy that you say that. You know, I don't, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's an incredible <laughs> restaurant. It's amazing. But we chef, do, yes. tell people at home, like, this might be intimidating to them because they're so, because of what you're making and the, the kebabs and this marinade. But this is easy stuff, This is right? super easy. You just saw it. It's peppers, onions, some spices, some garlic. And the idea is that we're going to blend this mm -hmm. to make it look kind of like gazpacho. Yeah, it does. All right? Well. But you don't want to, you know, you, you want to you marinate the beef with it first. How long are you going to marinate that? So we're, we're going to marinate this a couple, a couple hours. Okay. All right? But like I said, you can use chicken. You can use salmon. You can use really whatever you want. And just this marinade, letting it sit, is going to make it taste incredible. Now, at Laser Wolf Brooklyn, we cook it over charcoal. But you can use a broiler. You can use an oven. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. Fine. The marinade is what's important. We tether the meat. Mm -hmm. See, easy. Yep. Carson's easy. doing it. Can do you it. can do it, okay? Do it. And so we're going to skewer it. We're going to let it chill, and then we're going to broil it, and then you have these amazing, amazing kebabs. How okay. do you know when it's done on the broiler? I mean, it looks a little charred on the outside, but is it cooked all the way through on a kebab? I like, I like like medium to medium rare, but you can really do whatever you want. Gotcha. Obviously, if you're using chicken, you're going to cook it through. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a difference of a few minutes. Not a big deal. Delicious. With that, we're going to serve. We're going to make a little hummus. Okay. You're going to have a snack I'm gonna have a while snack. we do this, all right? So we're going to go. Oh, that's great. How, it's good? Oh, my God, yeah. Okay, good. Garlic. The flavors are incredible. Lemon. Now, the thing about... that meat? Uncle Al, so you're my, you're my so meat. Good? Really tender. All right, good. Everyone's okay. quiet over there, okay. so I can really like it, right? We what got a job to do here. Uh, this is sirloin. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but like I said, you can use whatever you want. Hanger steak is really good, too. Salt, cumin, lemon, garlic. Now, we're going to buzz this up first because we want the garlic to cook a little bit oh. with the lemon. All right? The, having that raw garlic taste with hummus is not what you want, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to just do this for a second. Okay. See, these are the pro tips right here. Yeah, this yeah. is the pro tip. You don't want garlic breath three days after you made your hummus, in my opinion. <laughs> Some people might. All right, now we're going to put in our trina, which is straight sesame paste. 
which is delicious. And then we're gonna add a little bit of ice water to make it really, really fluffy. Okay, that's the key. Oh, that's you want it to be really, really moussey. You know when you're making hummus and you mix it and you're like, I think I just made peanut butter. Yeah. That's also not what we want. Okay, yeah. so we wanna whip it up. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let this go. We made some over here a little bit earlier. You can see it's creamy, it so good. smooth. Now all you have to do is add your canned chickpeas to this yes. and let it It looks it like it's done, but there's no, the chickpeas aren't yeah. even in there yet. Well, this is an amazing sauce. If you want to have the trina sauce just with the steak or with chicken, totally fine. Mm -hmm. If you want to make like um, like a vegan, like green goddess dressing, oh, this is your answer base. right here, okay? Ooh. So now we're going to let that's this good. mix for three minutes more. Okay. And the difference, and the, there's nothing wrong with store-bought hummus, but like if yeah. you can make it at home, it's if just, you make it at home, the difference the is, difference is big, it, and it's not hard. Like right. I've yeah. actually even made this really is far, yeah, we one. call it a five-minute hummus. I made it in three and a half minutes yeah. with one hand taped to my head. Wow! So you can do it, okay? <laughs> Look weird. All right, we've got to. Garn <laughs> that was a little bit awkward for my eyebrows and my uh, hair when it came. <laughs> the tape came off, but that's okay. It's for a different time. Okay, All right, we marry mushrooms, these ideas. Mushroom garlic, beef with olive oil some dill, whatever mushrooms you want. I just like sauteed mushrooms on everything. Um, and then we're just gonna like spoon it right on this hummus. So Chef, good. I mean, this is just special. Amazing. You like it? Well yes. done. Well done. Yeah, and that's a little, yeah, but I added my meat right into that whole mix. You can do that. Oh, I'll you can, you're a chef now. You can do whatever you want. Like a Delicious. burrito. So you can eat it on the run. Chef Mike's, thank you so much. Going to be cooking with Hoda and Jenna later. Wow, you're double dipping this morning. You guys are really generous. These recipes are at today.com slash food. Guys, I mean, the best. best. 10 out of 10, right? Thank 10 you so much. 11 out of 10. Delicious. Thank, Thank you, Chef. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're back with first. Uh, oh, after your local news. Enjoy that. Thank you, Chef. Amazing. It's such a cool yeah. restaurant. Hi everybody, good morning, welcome to Today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on Today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's Today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. <laughs> Back in town, the miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. This morning on the third hour of today, royal health concerns. Princess Kate in the hospital following abdominal surgery. Her recovery expected to last months as King Charles prepares for his own procedure next week. We're live in London with the very latest. Plus, Allie Love's here, switching up our winter wellness routines from self-care in the kitchen to a better night's sleep. Then, later, two big stars dropping by Studio 1A. Isla Fisher on her new series that will leave you howling. I don't have a mother or wolf, Gary, and neither do you. And Lala Anthony is live to fill us in on the return of her hit show and share an exciting announcement today, Thursday, January 18th, 2024. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Ah, uh, and a good Thursday morning. Welcome to this third hour of today. Craig, Chanel, Good Mr. morning, Roker. gang. Hey there. Uh, we're going to check in with Dylan. She's down in Florida on a junket in just a moment. A golf junket. We can call it that. Right? Sure. I guess yeah, so. That seems accurate. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to start this hour with those royal health concerns that you've been hearing about over the last 24 hours or so. Princess Kate is in the hospital this morning. Kensington Palace revealed that she had abdominal surgery and she could be hospitalized for up to two weeks. Meanwhile, King Charles also preparing for a medical procedure next week. NBC's Molly Hunter over the pond in London following it all for us. Hey, Molly, good morning. What do we know? 
Hey guys, good morning. All of the health news, and I've got to say two major royal health announcements on the same day is extremely rare. Talking about Kate's condition, though, it sounds really serious, Craig. As you mentioned, 10 to 14 days in the hospital, another three months out of public view, and Kensington Palace is not telling us why she needed that surgery. This morning, Prince William visiting wife Kate, who is spending a second day recovering in the hospital after what Kensington Palace calls a successful planned abdominal surgery, saying she will likely remain in the hospital for 10 to 14 days, a rare lengthy stay. A source at Kensington Palace confirms her condition is non-cancerous. I wish Kate well. I think she's a fantastic princess. I wish her fast recovery. Uh, hopefully she's going to be okay. The palace also says she'll now cancel all events until after Easter, a long time to be out of view for the most popular royal. You know, I was told that she had a very packed schedule coming up between now and Easter and was very much looking forward to it. And that was just uh, a couple of weeks back. So things have obviously moved fairly quickly. Kate has long been seen as healthy, very sporty. Talking about the benefits of exercise. I really mm. generally love all sports. You know, I love swimming. Personally, I love swimming. Oh, cold swimming. Love the colder the better. Mm. With no known health issues outside of the much publicized extreme morning sickness with all three pregnancies, hospitalized for one. And last week on her 42nd birthday, the royal family posted this behind the scenes snap from King Charles's coronation, no inkling that anything might be wrong. We last saw Kate celebrating Christmas with the whole family at Sandringham. And the statement adds she hopes that the public will understand her desire to maintain as much normality for her children as possible. George, Charlotte, and of course, little Louis are at the center of their lives, and Prince William will also postpone events to support his family. Also yesterday, in a stunning second royal health statement in one day, Buckingham Palace announced King Charles will have a corrective procedure next week for an enlarged prostate. His Majesty's condition is benign, the palace says, reassuring news for this 75-year-old monarch. Benign, that is the big uh, reassuring word we, hear, we heard from Buckingham Palace about King Charles. He will also be postponing some engagements over the next week or, so, week or so while he recovers. But guys, these are a lot of high profile faces out of view. Prince William, we know, will not be holding any engagements while wife Kate is in the hospital. And over the next couple of months, he'll really be scaling back as well to support his family. We also know from Kensington Palace that there will be no international travel for either the Prince or Princess of Wales in the next couple of months. Months. Guys? All right, Molly, thank you. We're all human. We all have to take care of ourselves. And now let's bring in Dr. Roshni Raj, a gastroenterologist and associate professor of medicine at NYU Langone Health. Good morning to you. Good morning. You know, I feel, I, you know, we don't want to speculate, right. um, but, you know, they say that she has this planned abdominal surgery. It's so broad. What could that include? I think what's grabbing my attention is the, um, the stay. Was it the hospital stay, the hospital stay it, it does what? seem to be a bit long. So yeah. abdominal surgery really refers to any surgery where they're cutting into the abdomen, specifically the abdominal wall muscles. And that's really what takes the longest to recover. There can be a lot of pain there. You can imagine whenever you're moving, you're using those muscles. Sure. So it takes a while and it could take up to three months to really get back to 100% function. But the hospital stay, what they're saying up to two weeks seems a bit long. Usually, at least in the US, we would say probably three to seven days after an abdominal surgery. Right. It could be, the, I don't want to speculate. I know it could be anything to from that. gallbladder to a yeah. kidneys to, you know, endometriosis, who knows. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, it does seem a bit long, especially because she seems so young and healthy. On the other hand, maybe they just want to be extra be careful. careful. Sure. Why not? Keep sure. her in a very safe setting. And, you know, so, Absolutely. And, and probably for her, because she's going to events where maybe she has to stand for long periods of time and mm -hmm. she doesn't want to push it or be out there when she's not looking and feeling her Absolutely. best. So hard to say. Right. Let's, let's turn to the king for a moment here, mm -hmm. King Charles. I mean, it sounds like this is fairly routine for a man his age. Absolutely. And it's kind of nice that he's being open about it because mm -hmm. it, it lets men realize this is very common. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that almost is considered a normal part of aging. The prostate does grow as a man gets older. And if it enlarges to the point where it's causing urinary issues, some people seek treatment and that could be medication, sometimes procedures or even surgeries. Uh, usually they're fairly routine. And that's why we're hearing that his recovery is going to be a lot shorter, but I'm sure he'll do fine. And it is extremely common and fairly routine at his age. Okay.
Thank you, Dr. Rush. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Rush. All right. And now to the reason the fourth member of our team is not here. <laughs> Dylan is down in Orlando, Florida, with a well-timed trip uh, to tee it up with celebrities and golf pros participating in the event that kicks off the LPGA Tour season, the Hilton Grand Vacations Tournament of Champions. Dylan has her husband down there, uh, Brian, as caddy. And so this is the ultimate boondoggle. <laughs> How's it going for you guys? <laughs> Yeah, Brian, Brian likes to get in on these things, too, as my caddy. But, you know, this is the kickoff of my boondoggle season, to be honest. But more importantly, this tournament is also the kickoff for the LPGA season. So it's really a fun tournament for fans who come out here because there are about 29 LPGA players. You can see a lot of them behind me here getting some practice on the putting green. But they play alongside about 56 or so celebrities from TV, entertainment, music, athletes. And it's, it's fun for everybody to watch some really good golf and get some uh, autographs uh, while they're walking around out here too. Everybody a little bundled up more so I'd say than usual than what you'd expect in Orlando. Yesterday it was uh, really cold to start off the day but on Sunday morning it's going to be about 37 degrees in the morning so not quite what you'd expect for Florida. Uh, today my tea time's at 10 15 it's starting to warm up a little bit more but I don't quite know what happened. Maybe because I talk about golf so much that I fooled everyone here that I'm good at golf because I'm actually playing with John Smoltz. Uh, you know him as a former pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, but also Brooke Henderson. She won this event last year. So I don't really know how I got into this pairing, but um, I'll be the one, you know, off in the trees. Just try, try. don't mind me. So wait, I'm over I here. I'm just going to take another shot. I so, saw on Instagram uh, yeah, yesterday. We'll, we'll see how this all goes today. I saw on Instagram yesterday your trouble with one of your clubs. It looked like you broke it in half, like you were like He-Man or She-Ra or something. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Yeah, if only I was that strong and if only there was a better story behind all this, like, you know, I got mad at Brian for being a terrible caddy or something. But no, so Al, you were, you were asking me on Instagram, so there are ropes that kind of tie off, you know, where, where people can stand and we kind of went under the rope in our golf cart. And then Brian looks at me, he's like, what's that sound? And it's like this slow cracking sound as my five wood just cracked in half. It just got stuck on a rope. Oh. I felt pretty d d silly about it, but I, it turns out I'm not the only one who did that. It also happened to a pro yesterday too. So I'm not alone. I'm doing what the pros are doing. Yeah. Don't, go, don't go under the rope. No. Yes, yes. Well, you needed a new five wood anyway. <laughs> but she's been practicing. Yeah. I just want to know how it's going. Cause you, you took do. this really and seriously. I, I did. I want to not be in last place for just the first time in one picture. of these golf tournaments. So I've been practicing a little bit more. Uh, I'm trying to get my mind right. I feel good. I played pretty well yesterday. My putting was good. And if I can keep that going today, I'll, I'll be happy. I just Yay. want to not be in last place. Be last place. For you. you can't see the pictures that we're seeing, but they look legit. Like yeah, you can put look, those in a, look pro. in a frame. We love it. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Love you. All right, Dylan. Get him straight. The photographers right. help with that. <laughs> All right. And you can watch the LPGA Bye -bye. Tour Hilton Grand Vacations Tournament of Champions today through Sunday across NBC, Golf Channel, and Peacock. Cool. So we could actually go home and watch Dylan. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Up next, though, uh, another really cool and also eye-opening look at the invisible hand that's shaping what we all see on social media, how the algorithm works, and how you can actually take control over your feeds. And then later, look who's here, Isla Fisher. Hey! hey. Isla's gonna join us live to fill us in on her new series. And let's just say, her character's got a pretty big secret. Pretty, that's that's pretty, fair pretty, to pretty, say. Pretty, 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 pretty. We'll be right back. <laughs> Third hour's right back.
are back with one of our favorite correspondents here. Also back with a look at the technology that determines what we see on social media and how our feeds can go from entertainment to potentially harmful in just a few clicks. NBC's senior tech correspondent Jake Ward here in the studio to break down where these algorithms are taking this. And I think most folks know, sort of, yeah, or have an right. idea. Some sense of that, it. Right, that the algorithm is guiding us. Sure. Probably not the extent and to I'm which so that's I'm so curious happening. about this. Okay, great. Well, I'm so glad. I mean, you know, it is, I think, somewhat common knowledge that our social media feed is controlled by an algorithm. But what is that? And who controls it? And how do we keep dangerous and unwanted content away. There are some things we can do, but very few of us understand exactly just how precise and how powerful these algorithms can be. From puppies to new dances to memes, Americans average more than two hours a day scrolling content fed to us through algorithms based on our specific interests and past online activity. But a growing chorus of critics warns that algorithms can lead us to disturbing places and to making bad choices. These algorithms, uh, they are the digital equivalent of AR-15s. Some public figures are demanding regulation. They ought to be banned. They really ought to be banned. It's an abuse of the public forum. This TikTok user highlighting some of that criticism. I don't actually care about this kind of content. Well, if you care so little, why were you poking around in the comment section then? So how effective are these algorithms? Think about it this way. A grocery store like this one only knows what you are interested in once you've bought something. But a social media company knows every time you pause, even for a moment, to look at anything. And it constantly reorganizes the store to be more attractive to you. And that's why algorithms earn companies billions each year. But they can also lead us astray. In just three clicks, I can go from date night ideas to mind control seduction. China has censored social media for years, and the EU recently passed laws guaranteeing people the right to opt out of algorithms. Both sides of the aisle here have taken up the question of regulation, but no new laws have emerged. Why is the U.S. so far behind? It just becomes a Def definitional issue. So what people will say is, oh, we disagree on the specifics of regulation. We don't want it to be overbroad. But in reality, people are afraid of crossing powerful interest groups, business groups, technology lobbyists. That leaves us to figure it out ourselves. Now, you can limit your exposure by turning off the algorithm in Facebook and Instagram. On YouTube, you can turn off autoplay and sign out, which limits its ability to track you. And TikTok, well, you can reset the algorithm if you don't like what it feeds you. So I think it's important to recognize that, yes, we have some agency, but also these systems are constantly making decisions. Until some national standards emerge, it is you against the algorithm. Now, the thing to understand, you guys, right, is that this is fundamentally a business, and it's a business of attention. The more that you linger, even for a moment, on something emotionally heightened or offensive, the more you're going to get that kind of emotional and offensive content. So it's important to understand that, try and pull back from it where you can. We have some control here. But it really has all everything to do about how you advertise yourself, show that is yourself. So to fascinating! It's like it follows your thoughts. You can't lie to it because they see where you linger. Well, that's so. Then where is this all going? Like if you talk about you know 2024 and beyond. Well, I mean, you'd say follow your thoughts. I mean, this is, you know, that sounds like a lot, but it is really where it's going. I mean, back in 2015, Mark Zuckerberg famously talked about wanting to figure out the, the math of humans and their relationships. And that is what everybody's trying to do. And now as we're getting into these processors that are put right against your skin in something like a watch or Meta has these Ray-Ban sunglasses they're trying to get. Apple is working on this Vision Pro headset. All of that is getting up close to your skin and they're going to start monitoring, you know, what you like like where your eyes are going, what gets your heart rate going. The analysis that they're after is only going to get deeper and I, deeper. You know, one of the things I think, well, one of the things I find most troubling about it is, and you pointed this out in your piece, in many countries, you can opt out of this yes. stuff. Yes. I mean, it's so interesting, right? Because in the United States, we've talked in the past very much about how we should not regulate this because China will get out in front of us. China is actually regulating the heck out of this right now. You know, in the EU, you can say, opt me out of algorithms. Here in the United States, it's just the Wild West, you guys.
Great. Good to know. So Thanks, fascinating. Thanks for Thank scaring you. us. Sorry, again. sorry. Enjoy your coffee. No, it's scary. Scary. Sorry, enjoy. Enjoy. Okie dokie. Though. Well, coming up, we know we want the algorithm to bring us more Isla Fisher. Yeah. And guess what? She's here. She's live talking about her new Peacock series, a role she really sunk her teeth into. Ah. Then, we'll explain. <laughs> then later, our pal Allie Love is here to improve our winter wellness ritual, including a cool way to give your immune system a boost. Third hour today, I'll be right back. We are back with a talented actress who has taken on a wild role. Isla Fisher made us laugh and box office hits like Wedding Crashers opposite Vince Vaughn. And she showed off her dramatic side as Myrtle in The Great Gatsby. That was a great one, by the way. Really enjoyed that. Well, now she stars with Josh Gad in the Peacock series, Wolf Like Me. They play a couple navigating one hairy obstacle. Every full moon, Isla's character, Mary, turns into a werewolf. Well, guess what? Now there's a baby on the way, so there are even more unknowns. No, I mean, you don't know that none of that applies to us, okay? We could be having a baby. Yeah, we could be having a wolf. I don't know how to mother a wolf, Gary, and neither do you. Then let's get the ultrasound. Okay, we just need to know exactly what is going on in there. Then we can start worrying about everything else. For example, did you know that it's possible for a wolf to give birth up to 10 pups? <sighs> Why would you tell me that? <laughs> Isla, good morning. Good morning. Oh, this is terrific. I mean, it is the second season for the show. Yeah. Uh, and you, you turn into a wolf once a month. Yeah. Uh, which, <laughs> is, which is, at least you know what's going to be, what's it's coming. Funny. So what, what was it about this? I mean, because it just seems like it is rife with comedy. I mean, the clip that you've just seen is very werewolf heavy, but I will say that the werewolf, werewolf, the werewolf is just a metaphor for the baggage that we bring into relationships. And this story is a love story between, you know, Mary and Gary, and um, and and his daughter, and it really is just a genre bending, very cool, um, you know, odd bit of material that everybody just loves. And we've got really great reviews, and we love making it. And it's just a, it's a really fun show. And this second series is definitely, it's a bigger world now. They have more obstacles. Someone in Mary's past comes back, and um, yeah, it's a ticking clock. The cops are chasing us, and so it's just a, it's a, a really fun ride this season. The werewolf is a metaphor. I love. That. I know. Yeah. Uh, there, so there. Uh, so the, the show it takes place in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's filmed. It's filmed in Australia. Is it more difficult to use an American accent when you're surrounded, because your character's yes. American, more difficult when you're surrounded by Australian accents? Absolutely. They, you know, the director would come up and go, Ala, for this bit, I want you to, and then I'd hear that and have to do my American. I kept like, uh, yeah, it was definitely, um, it was the most challenging time I've had a dialect coach ever. Yes. <laughs> I never even thought about that. Yeah. Ala. Tell me what it's like working with Josh Gad. Oh, Josh Gad, as a person, he's just the funniest, sweetest guy. We have a similar sense of humor, and he he's a really, I trust him as a scene partner completely. But in this role as Gary, he really is exceptional. It, mm. He has really got, he's brought so much to this More character. More of a dramatic role than I think. Yeah, you, know, you haven't seen, seen him do him. this yeah. before, and he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when you work with Josh Gad, in a way, you get oh, bonus points, I would me. think if you've got kids, because you're working with Olaf from Frozen. <laughs> no, did, you, did your kid, were your kids impressed? Yeah, and he does requests. Oh. He's one of those guys that you never have to be embarrassed asking. He'll do like a friend of your nephew's cousin's neighbor, and he'll leave a full voice Aww, message. Like, hey, cool. I like nice. warm hugs. He's like,
like the best. I've always liked him, but that's just like yeah, up yeah. the ante. Hands down my favorite Frozen character, too. <laughs> I want to show you something. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, the name Isla, it's become wildly popular in this country. And we did some research. When you started, <laughs> when you started <laughs> acting yeah. in 2008, when you started popping up here in America, Notice the correlation between that <laughs> and where Isla became in terms of popularity ranking. Fifteen years ago, yeah, it's well. down around, you know, uh, somewhere between six and seven hundred. Now, it's one of the top ten names in America. Wow. Are you taking credit for this? I don't, I mean, I don't know about that, but it, it, that's very flattering that you, you think I should get credit for that. That's so sure. cool. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know that many Chanel's. I think we should, oh. we should What's take What's the story on, 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 I'm named after the island of Islay in, in Scotland, which is where they make whiskey, and my dad is a big, was a big whiskey drinker. Wow. But I actually love that everyone's called Isla now because I've I've had friends that have mispronounced my name sometimes for years, and I feel really self-conscious correcting them. So they just say, what do they say? Isla. 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 And then it's gone so far, and, you know, our kids have had so many play dates that I just answer to Isla now. So I'm relieved in a way that, that now everyone knows how to say it. Nice. And whoever's watching right now who's been calling you Isla is like, oh, no. <laughs> Wow, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Isla, Isla, it is always good to have you here. Aww, so thank, thank you. So good to see me. you. And season two of Wolf Like Me, streaming right now on Peacock, part of our parent company, NBC Universal. All right. Just ahead, our friend Allie Love is here to revamp our winter wellness routine from skincare to sleep help. And then later, Lala Anthony is live today in Studio 1A. She's sharing a fun new announcement that you'll want to hear before you plan your next getaway. We'll be right back. into the heart of winter. Just look at the, the thermometer. Uh, and just like we swap out our wardrobes in the colder months, we need to switch up our routines as well. So here with some ideas to do that. Here with some ideas to improve our winter wellness. Today, contributor, Peloton Sensation, Allie Love. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. So before we dig into some of these ideas Great. here, like the winter blues are an actual thing. Yes. Any advice for folks who think they might be starting to experience these winter blues? Absolutely. I think the number one thing to keep in mind is that you want to get out of the house. I know that doesn't feel good when it's cold, but you want to get with friends. You want to go to dinner. I went last night with my girlfriends to dinner. It reinvigorates, re-energizes you, and overall, it helps your mental well-being. Okay. And granted, when you are snowed in, you're like, Allie Love, I can't get out of the house. <laughs> get somebody on a Zoom or on FaceTime and just set a date with them. Having that at least once a week would be very helpful to your overall mental That's well-being, for sure. Let's start with taking okay. care in the kitchen. What do we yes. have here? Okay, so with the winter blues, sometimes you want to remember to spice up your life. It's uh -huh. so important. So we got good friends. We go out. We have a good time. But spice up your life inside. So we have our spices here. Mm -hmm. Turmeric anti-inflammatory, rosemary and turmeric, great for the immunity. You have cardamom antioxidants, nutmeg, great for sleep. And then you have some saffron here, which is great for cramps. Now, what you want to think of spicing is adding it to your food. A little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites, and it's really popular on social media, immunity cubes. So all of the ingredients here, which will pop up on the screen, you have ginger, orange, lemon, you have coconut milk. You All you do is 
blend these all together. Mm -hmm. You can take the skin off, mm -hmm. blend it all together, and then put the cubes in the freezer. What okay. you can do from there, you can add it to your tea, you can add it to your smoothie, you can blend it into your smoothie, and it's giving you that boost. These spices go a long way, so if you oh, add them in good. your smoothie. This is delicious. Oh, oh okay. Is, I, I was skeptical. Craig, Craig, I was skeptical. I know. This is, this, this, is, this is yummy. Craig was giving me the side eye about this, but again, this, this is something, is boost your metabolism. Oh, You're thinking, good. I want to kickstart my metabolism in the morning after I go for my walk. Out. What a great this idea, though, because once it's in the freezer, you just plop it out. Yeah, done. You're done. Oh, that's that's coconut milk, you said? Yes. Delicious. It is. Well done. Okay. All right. All right. So I'd never share this. So I'm going to get a little personal. Okay. I have this thing when it comes to me where I'm concerned about bad breath all the time. Okay. And I don't want my breath to smell bad. We talk to a lot of people. That's in our wheelhouse. And so in the morning, I switch up my routines in the winter. Most important, I introduce saline base, like nasal spray. And the reason for that is the air is so cold outside. And if you think about it inside, you have your heat blasting. Oh, yes. exactly. It's also like so dry. We're just so air is dry outside yes. and inside, <coughs> whether it's cold or hot. Okay. So And again, nasal spray, that's only, it's just salt water. This is yeah. basically salt water. It clears out the nasal passages, helps if you have any sinuses. And I also do alcohol-free mouthwash, mm. less chemicals, a little more gent gentler for that routine in the you morning. Teach you. I keep hearing that yeah. we should lean on to the alcohol-free mouthwash. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. important. And then a hydration station on your face, moisturizer. I'd love a little, I, I can't get to Mexico all the time in the winter. <laughs> so what I do is I'll take my, I'll take a little bit of a bronzer and I'll push oh. it in, like Wait, put it is in that there. A thing? Yeah. I didn't no know. way. Are you kidding? Yes. No, I didn't this, know is this is a thing. And, you, and I, I do it with my finger. Look at me. This is all you do. You blend so you it just up. Just fix your bronzer with your moisturizer. Yes. And make, that way you don't have to wear foundation. You nothing. just put that on. Just put that on. That's what I have. Yes. On my head. Craig's doing that. That's I was it. gonna say. That's... And that's why I look a little tan. Wait, that's the really win. <laughs> yes. So again, yeah. these are ways. And then also mm. hydration primer is great. So if you do put on makeup where you have on a lot more foundation, a primer that is hydrating is really important. So okay. think of that and mm -hmm. introducing into your morning routine. Great idea. That's what different about, than the summer. What about sleep in the winter? If there was a Guinness Book of World Records on who can sleep really quickly and fast <laughs> and long and efficient, it's me. I'd win. Uh -huh. That's just what it is. Wow. All the rage are sleepy girl mocktails. Sleepy girl? Sleepy girl. Yeah, what goes sleepy into person, it? Sleepy person. What's mocktail. in it? So tart, tart cherry juice. Uh huh. Uh huh. A little sparkling water, as you can see, correct? Because yeah. it's a mock. I mean, as you can see out, because it's a mocktail. And then in there, it's a magnesium, a little bit of powder oh, that is good. Magnesium. Yeah. I actually take magnesium every night. This I do too. Good. Too. Magnesium has melatonin in it, so it does help with sleeping. Okay. And then. Ashwanda, great for stress relief, calming down. This is comes in all Isn't that forms. Where Black Panthers from? <laughs> that is, you know you what? I so can't Wakanda. Oh, oh, Wakanda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get it. <laughs> Ashwagandha, again, stress relief, and then great sleep. Cool, 68 degrees. A cooling blanket goes a long way. You know, the cooler the temperature, yeah. not only do you sleep longer, but you have grim sleep and deep sleep. These are all winter hacks that will boost your immunity, make you feel great, and get you ready and energized for the next day and throughout the day. These were really good, Allie. And so, so you just. You just, I'm gonna you just put it on. Is it a weird? <laughs> is it a weird thing? Wait. I'll tell Craig, there's nothing to this. You just literally that's cover so up with it. It's a blanket. I've never it's heard so of this. Nice. Yeah, but feel how cool no. it is. I know, right? Yeah, but you just put a drop on your... You can put a drop in your water. These are gummies, and then you can take supplements. And what does it do? Um, ashwanda helps with stress relief and anxiety. So right. it's like... All right. Ashwanda forever. <laughs> yeah. Allie, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Allie. Uh, while, while these are all small tweaks, we should mention that you should consult with your doctor before you make any major changes to your routine. Absolutely. All right, just ahead, we are catching up with Lala Anthony. We're going to find out about the return of her hit show, and she has an exciting announcement today. You'll hear it coming up, and then later, we are stirring things up and shop all day with simple ways to treat yourself right at home. We'll be right back.
our next guest is the definition of multi-talented. Lala Anthony is a TV personality, an actress who has starred in hit shows like 50 Cent BMF. But she's also a philanthropist and she's also a mom. And today, well, Lala's got an exclusive announcement that is going to add another special <laughs> title to her resume. So she's going to reveal that in just a moment. Lala, good morning to you. Good morning. Happy Hi, Lala. New Year. Always a pleasure hanging out with you guys. Absolutely. So here's the deal. Before we get to this announcement, I know in 2024 you talked about this was going to be the year where you put yourself first. What are you doing? Because you have a gazillion projects. So how are you putting yourself first? I don't know if I'm doing a good job. Man. I'm like, what are we doing? Maybe, maybe I'll start that next week. <laughs> okay. All these January. projects are you putting yourself first in some ways. Exactly. I mean, I love working. So yeah. in that way, yes, that's putting myself first. But also self-care. I've never been good at that. I was even watching you guys talk over there about just little things you could do in your morning routine just to switch it up a yeah. little bit. We have to take care of ourselves. And I have to remind myself to kind of slow down sometimes and take some time to that. myself. And as a mom and as a woman, I think we forget that sometimes. Absolutely. So it's just a reminder to all of us out there to take some time to yourself. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the show you're in BMF uh, from uh, 50 Tent, uh, you, it, your character, Markeisha, gets shot. Uh, at the end of the season. So so how are you doing Come up, well, coming up on season three? Well, yeah. well here, here's the good news. How are you doing? Yeah. I still have a job. So I must I'm, be okay. I'm, I'm okay and I'm back. It's a roller coaster ride, but BMF is just such People an incredible story. People love it. I love being a part of it. 50 Cent is a genius in my eyes and such an amazing executive producer. And we're just having a great time over there. And we're excited for this season. The fans are super excited. Mm. You will not be disappointed. It. It's so unpredictable. It's going to be a great season. All right. Well, so we've been teasing, teasing this thing on one. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Tell everyone about La La Land. Yes. So La La Land is something I'm really excited about. And I'll just go into my announcement. Okay. Today, it's been announced that I am the new creative advisor over at Airbnb, oh, which wow. is something oh, I am so, so excited so about. Sad. Creative wow. advisor. Creative advisor. And I get to bring all my decades of, you know, entertainment experience and relationships to Airbnb. And I just want to create some really cool experiences and activations with celebrities, influencers, production companies that we all can be a part of. So I'm really excited about that. I have a lot of friends that are going to do some amazing things with Airbnb that we all can experience. And I'm happy about it. So the first thing is La La Land, which you're seeing here. This is my property down in Fort Lauderdale, which is my little secret getaway because it's close to Miami. You can hang out. Okay. And you see I designed all the decor. Everything is me. And I'm opening up for everyone to come hang out. Girls trips. Thinking, people actually yes, go people and book it on Airbnb. So you're going to be there? I'll, I'll be there so and I'd... let some people in and host. And then sometimes I won't be there and I'll let them do their thing. But I'm That's thinking cool. like girls trips vacations, you know, that is mommies so that just want to get vacation. I like that. Like I like that. that. I mommies that, that want to get away. So La La Land is opening up for, for a stay really soon, and I'm just really, really excited If you're going to be a paid it. spokesperson for something, why not do something like this? This exactly. is amazing. All right, well, speaking of girlfriends and trips, can we talk about your girl squad? Like, okay. I mean, it's kind of like the pinnacle of, like... <laughs> I mean, hello, it's like Kelly Rowland, Kim Kardashian, Sierra. I mean, you guys are a tribe. Yeah, I have great girlfriends. And you know how important it is to have great girlfriends. We get to talk about everything, be there for each other. We do get to take take great girls trips. I'm definitely bringing them down to La La, La, La Land, Land for sure. Because I said it's in Fort Lauderdale, but it's close to Miami. So Miami is, is where it's at. We can hang out and have some fun. Beautiful. Wow, that's kind of cool. And, and speaking of cool, your, your son Kyan is a high school student. Mm -hmm. now, and mm -hmm. uh, he, you recently posted a picture of him, and some video of him and da with uh, visiting his dad, Carmelo's Anthony's uh, uh, alma mater. Yes, it's that, Syracuse. That, that's pretty cool. Now, is, that does he want to follow in those footsteps? He's thinking about it. He's taking college visits now, which is crazy to think I have a son that's taking college visits now. But to go to Syracuse and see you know him at the same school that his dad won the championship in, that was a surreal moment. That's something that I'll never forget and it's like that was unbelievable everywhere you looked it was just mellow was everywhere it was like a mellow shine and then I'm looking at Cayenne standing right there and I'm like this is actually crazy Amazing. so pretty soon Cayenne will announce you know where he wants to go he's still you know researching and, yeah. and taking his time but there'll be an announcement soon enough y'all are buddies are you ready for that Al always talks about it when everybody's out of the house it's yeah. kind of a new season I don't, I don't feel like I'm ready for that <laughs> I don't feel yeah. like I'm, I love He's my only child. I yeah. love having my son in the house. And he's like, Mom, you got to get ready because I'm leaving. <laughs> so he's very excited yeah. about it. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, I can't. Oh, I can't. But, you know, it's 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 part of what happens. Yes. And I'm going to be supportive. The and nest okay. may be empty, but at least you've got La La Land. Exactly. At least I got La La Land. Well, all 
always have La La Land. I'll always have, when it's all said and done, I'll always have La La Land. Oh, for sure. Thank you so much. That's pretty cool. Bookings for La La Land, by the way, open on January 24th. Yes. And season three of BMF premieres March 1st on Stars. Maybe you can get a power nap in between. Exactly, exactly. Things. Check out BMF and I'll see you down at La La Land. So I'm going to have a great time. You are all right. doing all the things. Now. Uh, still ahead. Shop all day, folks. And we, we think you're going to warm up to these easy ways to pamper yourself right at home. Goes a back towel? to what, what Lala was just talking about. Okay. Self-care. Oh. Self-care. Third hour of today, right back after this. to treat yourself. This morning, Shop All Day is all about indulging in those little things that make you feel good. Shop All Day contributor Michael Nuvo is here. Great job. Good right. I got it. Uh, <laughs> so, so close. So very close. Scan the QR code to see all of these products. Michael, good to see you. Good morning. All right. So maybe you didn't get what you wanted for the holidays. Or maybe you just needed Which was a pronunciation guide. Don't worry about it. Listen, it's always just a treat being here. Or maybe you didn't get what you wanted for the holidays. Been or you here just for like need... 38 times. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it makes me happy being here. Flowers also make me That's happy. So idea. let's talk about this. These are a delivery <laughs> subscription for flowers. Oh. Oh, I absolutely love that they come every single, you could choose if you want them every month love. or if you want them every single week. They come in three subscription packages that you can choose from. So if you forget birthdays like I do, this is absolutely great. In fact, the deluxe is the mid-size one, and it comes with enough vases and the flowers that you can put them in two separate vases. Oh, so oh, it wow. comes with the vase. It's not just giving yeah. you the flowers. They're not just giving you the flowers. And again, you can split them up with that mid-size mm -hmm. collection. So I really love the look of it. It's and today, idea. we have an amazing deal for our Today viewers. We're yeah. giving you a code, TODAY20, $20, $20 off your first subscription. It's something about flowers that just make you super yeah, happy. Yeah. So I love getting it. Books. Books. Oh, Books. Yeah. Books. Okay. Oh, Absolutely. Right. Talking about winter and, <laughs> and how dry your skin gets. Absolutely. So, oh, I yeah. Mean, these. So these, these are, are hand masks. These are from Aveeno. If your hands get dry in the winter, these are absolutely great. So you just kind of pop them on exactly. And Except there's stuff inside? There it does. Go. They're formulated oh. with shea butter and prebiotic. <laughs> you can fit them in there. Shea butter and prebiotic oats. And think about this. While you're relaxing at home, watching TV, watching your favorite movie, you put them on for 10 minutes. All you have to do to use them is you wash your hands. Why do you look put creepy them in there. doing that? Okay. So <laughs> how do they feel, I'm trying Craig? I'm the stuff around my fingers. Well, Feels you, great. You you don't have to do anything. That's the best wow, part about it. That. You just put it on for 10 minutes. Just relax, have some me time, and then you take them off. And all of that shea butter, all of that moisture That's is then stuff. infused. So it oh. restores that moisture back into your hand. I I Mr. Cellophane, <laughs> don't you know my name? <laughs> These are absolutely... Oh, <laughs> He's is... in a happy mood. Is it because he had his coffee? Yeah. Yeah. So what if Not I yet. told you that you don't have to stir your own coffee? This is an uh -huh. automatic... Yep, that's right. This is an automatic stirring cup, so it does the job for you. So picture oh, that's this. cool. You're running out of the house in the morning. The right. kids are chasing you down. You got sure. stuff all over. I'm uh -huh. going to tip it over so you can guys I can see. see. Yeah, can you guys see it? Let me yeah. know. I'm going to add a little bit of milk okay. in here. That's a lot of milk. A lot of milk. Oh, I like my Don't milk, judge. you know? And then there you go. You turn Let's it see. on. Do you hear it? 
starring, Ooh. doing his thing. How do it know? <laughs> how do you know? You look. No, it's a yeah. Like, how does the cup know? How does it? Well, it's super intelligent. It? it works with batteries. It so does cool. the work for you. So again, it frees up your hands. But if you're not a Especially coffee drinker. Especially if you run out of spoons. There you go. I mean, and you might be thinking, why would I need this? But you know how sometimes you forget to stir up your coffee yeah, while you're working? There, or you're and it's just sitting there and it got the little sediments at the bottom. Boom. You stir it and then that. it is done. And again, it does come with that stainless steel uh, cup. So you could just use it as a regular drinking cup when you're done. Chanel, it's so I cute. I can see you in I was oh, just about absolutely. to say, and about these, put, Chanel. So what do you do? Do you put them like, it's like they could get warm. Oh, but these are not just regular slippers, though. What are they? These are microwavable slippers. See? I, I know. know it. This is such a treat. You can put you, them in the microwave. Okay, so but you, you don't wear them when you put them in. No, okay. I don't. Very important. Can so what you, you do is, when you talk That's about nice. cozy and just treating yourself, so this is what you do. You pop them in the microwave for about 60 seconds. They stay warm for about an hour. But feel how nice they are. Okay, they feel great. Chanel is loving them. And according to the brand, they're great for all ages. Ages, right. all sizes, is one size fits all. But just smell them. Smell them. This is lavender. Oh, yes. They're infused oh, with lavender. Wow. So it's a wow. nice little tree. Okay. okay. And then the Okay. Favorite item of the day. Yeah. All right. So everybody's going crazy over this. This is the ultimate treat yourself that item. Is it is yeah, a little bit of a slurge, but it's so it's worth it. it. This is a towel warmer, you guys. So it warms oh, up your gosh. towel. But instead of just using it for towels, you can use it for PJs. You can use it for blankets. You can use it for socks. Oh, Feel how warm so that is. Right? Right? You can put on warm PJs every night. That is a Isn't that great? Step out the shower and it covers you, but you can use it all year I round yes. in the summertime imagine having a nice little towel like that's warm you up McCall, we say yes. You say yes. You we love it. Yes. It's so Ooh, worth it. Nice. This is, <laughs> McCall, this is absolutely Thank great you, to keep McCall. you nice and warm. Right. <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're so welcome. Scan the way QR to, code yes. below or head to today.com slash shop. And don't forget, you can even access more exclusive deals. This is not now it's being creepy. It, 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 oh, it scans the internet for discount codes so you oh, can cool. get the best price every time you check out. You're going to put your heads together again? That's right. Shop today savings. All oh, shop today savings. Like Lady in the there you go. They couldn't hear me because I had to. Oh, uh, it would be right there. <laughs> it's just so much talk. Tomorrow on the third hour of today, a first look at the 2024 LinkedIn Jobs Report. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, Law and Order SVU's Mariska Hargitay. And we will see you tomorrow. In the meantime, have a great, have day. A great day. Everybody. Do you have your moisturizer in your hand? Good morning. Welcome to the third hour of today. Yes. We're so proud of you. Cross that finish line in yeah. style. Our <laughs> Chanel. This is for you, too. I had news anchors on one wall <laughs> and you. I love this stuff. From Law & Order SVU, Emmy-winning actress Mariska Hargitay is here. Then we'll meet the Jacobs family who want to transform in 2024, and they're kicking off their journey with us. Plus, Sophia in the City, the single actress, opens up about dating in NYC. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, so up, it's today right with Hoda. And Jenna.
It all starts right now. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's Thursday, 18th day of January. Happy you're here. Happy we're all here. It feels like the weekend breath. is just uh -huh. close it by, is doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I know. Closing it's, in. By the way, how many layers have we had to wear here? Not that I'm complaining about winter, but my kids no, no. getting dressed for school. I know. Hats, gloves, mittens, snow pants. It's zipped so up. cold. It's like. Uh, it's some of this. They're not going outside. Mm -hmm. They're not doing like recess because it's that cold. I had to but, go somewhere yesterday and the car, um, I was in the car, the guy turned it off for a little bit and it was time to go and it was like click like everything's freezing like that's what's happening the engine was freezing mm -hmm. engine i walked froze. outside i went to the gym this morning uh -huh. walked outside with wet hair <gasps> just as an experiment to see and if it would freeze did it i wasn't out there long no. enough i no. really wanted it to but no your, it didn't was your now, hair just freshly washed looks good we have to talk a little bit about um different types of friends because <laughs> and uh, you know the type of friend that's just brutal absolute honesty because for example this friend of mine right here said in verbatim these words to me did you get your hair your hair looks great you got it highlighted thank goodness it was about time <laughs> well you added it's about time no. I did not add it was about time. It came out of your mouth. I, did I say that? You were like, well, Sammy, you, know you really needed you it. Need it. Yeah, but you did need it. Like when I, yes. Okay, Don't can I ask you a question? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Would you say that to every single person no. or just very close, close friends? Close friends, yeah. Isn't it interesting how yeah. truth becomes yes. easier? Well, because it's not your business if someone else does. But I'm. I, look, but it's your business you, if your yes, partner, you're my Jenna, business. does it. You're my business. You have to I'm look at it business. every day. Yeah, you're not seeing it. I'm seeing it. Just like you're looking at mine going, wow, when is she ever going to get her roots done? And I did. Well, I didn't say that but because thought. I thought your hair looked great. I'm also <laughs> not pushing you into the other things that people are pushing you into. And we'll talk like about that what? in a minute. Well, I heard on the earlier hour that Savannah's trying oh. to push you into a bow. Yeah. You know I like a bow. Mm -hmm. You do rock a bow. Not everybody's a bow person. Not everybody's a bow person. It's okay if you're not. I know, and they're trying to force me they're to do it. They're forcing you. Yeah. They're putting you a little bow on your head. And <laughs> All right. Speaking of um, <laughs> nothing, there's no transition. Okay. So your son, Hal, yes. who's how old? He's four and a half. Four and a half. Sweet, sweet Hal. Yes. Hal's been in a crib yes. since birth until about a week ago. Yes. So um, I was what ill. Happened? I was quarantined. You were quarantined. I was we know pushed what that away. means. Yeah, yes. you know, I had the COVID. Yeah. I was pushed away into my room watching all that was on television. Everything. And how was free to be me himself. That's true. He and was free to be himself. you and me. What yeah. happened? And so, what happened? so Henry heard him say, Daddy, Daddy. And he went and he said, I'm ready. And Henry said, what, you're ready for what? He said, I need to move into my big boy bed. So the big boy bed's been waiting just been whenever he's ready. It's been in the room for about two years. <laughs> and <gasps> there he is. Oh, little angel house. But it all happened without his mother's help. <laughs> and that leads me to wonder if I'm too overbearing. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes just to him, the other is like... You let them be. It, so it is anyway. funny because sometimes when we are out of the picture, yeah. we think nothing, no changes are going to ha happen without our urging guidance. or cheering or guidance. I mean, I was, now, because y'all had shamed me and really the whole community had shamed me for the fact that he was in a crib. You all shamed me a little. And I said, okay, how? I think it's time. Some friends have said it's yeah, time to move. He and say? he was not ready. He was scared. You know what I love? He, he really did tell you when he was ready. Yes. And what difference does it make if he's in a crib or in a bed? No. And when he's 20, he's not going to remember he was in a bed till he was four and a half. Well, he'll remember because it's going to be in. Oh, right. <laughs> this will live on the internet. Um, okay, we have to talk about Sofia Vergara. Yeah. She is she is incredible in a new role on Netflix. It's called Grisadella, mm -hmm. which I can't wait to see. She yeah. plays a crime boss. Yeah, it does look good. Um, so she stopped by Fallon, and she opened up about something. You know, she was with Joe Manganella for years. They broke up and now she's opening up about dating, mm. being single in New York City. Take a look. I think that you have more options with men also. I think so. I'm single now. That's right, you're single. So in New York, there's more people, there's not only like actors or, you know, write uh, or directors. There's, I think there's like a bigger, I'm going to spend more time in New York. Really? <laughs> So people just interested in just stuff that they're interested in, yeah. And also, there's great food here in New York, too. There's great food for when you go out in dates. It's better, yes. She really is ready. 
She's ready. She is ready. Gosh, I wish I had somebody to introduce her to. Who do you know? You know people. I don't know. I'm Maybe. Sophia, Maybe she's fab. Yeah. We got to think of somebody That is her. interesting, though, because she's saying, like, in L.A., you get stuck in your lanes. It's yeah. like you end up in groups with like-minded people. Or feeling people, like you need to date or, an actor because yeah. you're an actor. Yeah, or maybe you're at the same out things and whatever, but I do like it. She's free. How do you open. find dating in New York City? Well, I've only gone on two dates since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've only well, I think two. it's time for us to change that. Are you about to reveal something right now? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Come on out, Bill. What? Like, what are you doing? I know. That in the We're going to change that. The inflection in my voice sounded too dramatic. But I just think it is time for us to change that for yeah. you. Okay. And, and for Sophia. Yeah. I'm on it for both you of know you. What? There's a, there are a lot of people who are entering brand new and exciting chapters. Yes. And these are all exciting chapters. So. Yes. Yeah. I, believe, okay. I agree with that. All right. All right. So here's something that Pharrell Williams is doing. So he's the men's creative director at Louis Vuitton, and he created what is now being called the new it bag. Everyone's talking about it. That's it. It's a sandwich bag. So it looks that's like you know, a lunch looks bag. Like the kind something you take your to kid work. takes to school. Uh huh. Although it's made of leather and it's three thousand dollars. <laughs> That's and funny. it just thought, just got me thinking. You were actually sort of the inventor of the sandwich bag. Oh yes! <laughs> Remember, when Hoda used to go to red carpets bringing a Ziploc for well, some because, strange, no, strange it, it reason. It wasn't strange reason. Do we have photos of that strange day where she there thought many this was appropriate? By the way, there were many days, and here's why: they're easy. You can see what you have. Nobody cares what purse you're carrying. Well, we decided to make. Um, oh my God! Is that a sumo? Yeah. Hoda's lunch bag. <gasps> I'm so into it. Your favorite these lays? sumos are cr my lays a banana. Yeah. Oh my God! These are Maybe awesome. Maybe you could sell it for three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, guys, Law & Order, SVU's Mariska Hargitay is here. We have so much to catch up with her on, including a big milestone smell that. birthday. Smell that. Smell right that. After this. Smell that. I love a sumo. I love a sumo. How was not into a sumo last night? Margate is an incredible actress and activist. Yeah, and for more than two decades, she's played Olivia Benson on Law and Order SVU. And the groundbreaking 25th season mm. of that show starts tonight. We have a sneak peek. I almost don't want to ask. Where, where did you find it? We found it in an abandoned van in Pennsylvania, <laughs> but we are following some very strong leads. This is fun. Okay, we're tracking the van's route. You're tracking the driver. Is she still alive? We have no reason to believe that she's not. Your daughter is very resourceful. She left this bracelet for us to find. <laughs> oh, my you know, gosh. We want to know what happened. Is she gone? You'll have to watch. <laughs> Tell us. No spoiler alert. Where here, is the people. van? Where is the van? <laughs> I found it. Of course you did. Because you're Olivia Benson. You can do everything. You can do everything. I'm really amazing. <laughs> yes. I, I meet law enforcement on the street and I say, sweetheart, I've solved more crimes in 40 minutes than you have in your entire career. You, but by the way, probably people do stop you on the street they do. in yeah. unbelievable awe. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. What do they say? What's What are some of the things? You know, it's so um, beautiful because mm -hmm. I have such an intimate relationship mm -hmm. with 
with New Yorkers. Yes. Yes. And yes. I do feel, I remember when we started shooting, Dick always said he described the backdrop of New York City as like a sixth character. Mm. And at first I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, there's some great locations. <laughs> but then as I lived it, I truly understood that it is indeed. And New Yorkers are so open and you rub up yeah. against them and they tell you what they think yeah. and they tell you their opinions and so you're like yeah come on, <laughs> I like that. Into it. but they've been so incredibly uh, you know I have a question. supportive and love filled I have a question about the 25 years because I was thinking about any relationship for 25 mm. years is beautiful but yeah. also sometimes relationships get stale they have yeah. to be rejuvenated it's not always a steady trek like wow it keeps getting better and better yeah how did that 25 year arc play out for you well that's a, a really great question you know I've, I've obviously been reflecting it because we've been talking about it so much and um, for me um, Obviously, it's unprecedented, and most actors mm -hmm. don't get an opportunity mm -hmm. to have um, this kind of longevity mm -hmm. in a relationship like that, certainly on camera. But um, one of the greatest things for me is the friendships. And one of the biggest gifts for me is the friendships. And some of the most important people and the closest people in my life are from the show from different times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's been the thing. If people go like, oh my god, how do you do it 25 years in? I say, well, A, because I've been on about what feels like seven different shows. Yes, yes that's right. Point. So there was the first iterations, yeah. incarnations, and so mm -hmm. the first, obviously, 12 years mm -hmm. was, was that, mm -hmm. which was so incredible. And, you know, obviously, we know that Maloney and I had some sort of, you know, God-given... Um, chemistry. Chemistry. Affair. Um, and yeah. it was... <laughs> Too. Well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, By the way, the chemistry is still there. Yeah. We just yeah. have to say yeah. it. Yeah. Because we talk about it often. On I the know show. you do. <laughs> I've heard that. But um, you know, but when when uh, season twelve, season thirteen, everything changed. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. got a whole new cast yeah. and yeah. a whole new vibe of the got show. It. And then you know Kelly came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Danny Pino came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and it was utterly different mm -hmm. and we had a new crew and we had new writers yeah and so here i was yeah going, oh, it felt yeah. new. It yeah. felt, everything new. felt new and yeah. then again it changed again then there were the you know raul years and, mm -hmm. and there were so many different times and then you know peter scanavino mm -hmm. came yeah. and it's been um you know these these people i am i cannot count my blessings there are too many to count with the um love and relationships and intimacy and intimacy and because mm -hmm. of the subject matter how yeah. we get so much closer and drop in so much more quickly than i think otherwise yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's been um so incredibly um nurturing and fulfilling and uh magnificent <laughs> you also met your husband i did which must be just such a beautiful part of that mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. You all are celebrating 20 years. Yeah. How do you keep that? How do you keep that new and fresh and... <laughs> and you know, I, um, mm -hmm. I feel uh, I'm at a point in my life where I, I can't, it just keeps getting better with mm. him. Mm -hmm. And you know, marriage is not always no, like this and, 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 or any relationship that is deep and matters but you know I um, have learned so much Peter always says this beautiful quote about I don't know if it was Adrian Rich or who said it but he says um, there's a quote about breaking through marriage mm -hmm. into marriage mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that is what yeah. I think we've lived yeah because um, at, at this time in my life I feel uh, very different than I have for the last maybe 15 or 18 and I we, um, feel we, short up in in my in our love we had Jodie Foster on mm -hmm. the other mm. day and she said her 50s were a mess and her 60s were the best yeah we had Jamie Lee Curtis your dear friend on and she and said Jody. And Jody, and Jody was also dear a friend. Bestie. Yes, dear friend. For a long time, Jody was. By the Jody. way, the 60 Club is we awesome. The, I'm Michelle Obama. Obama turned 60 yesterday. Uh, we have Miss Hoda Kopp. I'm turning, turning 60. 60 in August. What describe what it is like at this little juncture? You're stepping into a new decade, a new situation. Like, how are you feeling in this moment? I um, have never felt more peace. I think peace is something I've been after for a long time. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I feel like I have more space and have learned how to um, work smarter mm. and um, mm. the compassion that I've sort of garnered and you know it was funny because I, I'm an extremely empathetic person I'm extremely compassionate with others um, but like many of us yeah. we have found that so hard mm. to yeah to give to ourselves and I think that has been the key is growing and having the tolerance to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. and really understanding the gift that awaits on the other side and I offer that to you Hoda because I know that you're uncomfortable with wearing a bow <laughs> and I want to say that this is a time for you to sit in that and and, and do feel some, it and hold do it, it do and, and wear a bow time. and see yes. what happens on the other side. By the way, you I know, wore a bow on the sh I've worn a yeah, bow a couple yes, times. Have. Yes, you I love a bow. Yeah. No, but I also think if she ain't a bow girl, yes, don't. but hold please. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is a thing. There's a little part that of her is there a that might be a bow girl. Well, a might I, there might I, be a little likes part. to try things. Yes, I'm taking your notes. I'm saying just try it. Maybe you say no, it's not for me. But I don't want you to do it. Shall we do it tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. Oh, Look at her. Do you see that thing? She goes like this. She doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> tomorrow. Coming up next, Mariska's going to stick around. Yeah, we're going to see if she'll play a little game with us right after this. You don't, you don't want to. I can try. It depends on how they do it. Coming up tomorrow. Hoda and I take the plunge on our journey to health and wellness. Plus, Donna's sweet knock-knock surprise at a neighborhood coffee shop. And from Mexico to Montreal, the hottest destinations to visit in 2024. That's all Friday on Hoda and Jenna. Celebrating our girl Jenna Bush Hager. Go so, read me. It's so good. Are y'all still happy your daddy's home? Yes. There's Jenna. She's not afraid to be herself. <laughs> love you, Jenna. I love you. I love you. I love you. All right, we're back with Mariska Hargitay, aka Captain Olivia Benson from Law Norris SVU, about to lay down the law. It's a series we're calling All, All Rise, Rise for Judge Mariska. Mariska. Okay, here is how it's going to work. <laughs> We're okay. going to give you a buzzy topic. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to tell us your take. All yeah. right. Okay. Remember to hit your gavel when you're finished. Oh, thank you. All right. The first one. Are you ready? Yeah. Your friend, Jamie Lee Curtis, was just here, and she says she goes to bed before 7 p.m. Yes. How do you feel about a 7 p.m. bedtime? I love it. Oh, okay. I couldn't go to bed at 7 p.m. if my life depended on it. Okay. When, when's your normal bedtime? Sadly, um, not before 1230. <gasps> do you can't. sleep late? No, I can't sleep. It's an issue. <laughs> okay. Wait, and so then I get up early. I can't go. I can't. I all I want. I, believe me, I read every article that says go you have to, to go to bed before yeah. 10 p.m. to get you know yeah. everything. Yeah. And I try, and I can't it, sleep. It's just not your thing. No, it's also the only time at night when I have alone time. peace. Right? Alone yes. Kids are asleep, and I can process. Yes. So my brain won't allow it. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's the next one. Was that okay. TMI? No. no, that was not TMI. It. All right, so you're turning 60 yes. on the 23rd, right? Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. the 23rd. How do you feel about bucket lists? Are you into that? Uh, yes, sure. What's on your bucket list? <laughs> I just told we just, you. Let's, do, let's put it into the universe. <clears throat> you know what our girl Oprah says. Put it out there. <laughs> put it out there. Uh -huh. um, I want to give women the uh, power and attention that yes. they deserve. 
and I want to do some kind of campaign about um, strength and owning all of ourselves. Okay. I'm already in. I like yes, it. Yes, that's going to happen. Chills. And I've never felt as strong and compassionate and um, inhabited as I as I do now, and I know a lot of women yes. my age yes. that feel that yes. way. Yes. And I just want to put that yes. in the Let's world. do it. Yes, I love yeah. this one. Um, okay, here's your, the last one. How do you feel about people serrating you? Serenating. Serenating you. <laughs> yeah. Serrating either <laughs> and singing happy birthday. I'm not a fan. You're not? Well, no. we're sorry. One, two, three. <gasps> happy birthday to you. Happy <laughs> birthday to <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> So why aren't you a fan? Um, <laughs> because it's awkward. Um, uh, I very much appreciate it from you. I like it if somebody is a singer by trade. Um, we, we, do you know no, no, you guys, no, no, you guys are great. Anyway, we I have like a single. It. We have a song. Okay. It's well, hey, guys, uh, stay with that. Um, but I, I like it if it's like. You know, like Taylor. Or, oh um, wait, we have friend. to talk about something. Your bestie. We have to talk about. I wish. You you yes. adopted a cat. I ha I got adopted a cat this Christmas. Yeah. She's like. We good. get Taylor's. Yeah, is... Your cat, Taylor's cat, and my cat together oh, for a God, cat yeah. play date. I live for it. You, wait, um, no. I don't understand the obsession. Wait. I'll be yeah. honest. I don't. Yeah. I love I love my cat. Yeah. Um, you don't understand cats? The, no, I get. I understand cat. cats. I understand cats. I just. Un <laughs> You're I'm, not obsessed? No, I am. But there's other things. I have children. <laughs> um, but I, I, I was not a cat person. I'll be yeah. honest. Okay. Yeah. And I love lions. Yeah. I see myself as a yes. lion. Yes. And I saw this cat. Yeah. And I went crazy for it. My husband went crazy for it. He did not want another animal because we have a dog. Yeah. And we saw this cat and I was sitting there thinking I was going to have, because my kids were like, mommy, mommy, please. Yeah. And I, you know, it was all like, daddy, daddy's not going to go for yeah. this. Yeah. And then Peter was like, I love that cat. <laughs> and that was it? Yes. Okay. And what did you name your cat? Karma. Karma. Karma for Taylor. Karma needs to meet my Karma little is cat. A cat. Karma, Karma is, is a cat. cat. Karma is a cat. Karma is a cat. like that. Oh. Anyway, oh, that's, um, I'd like to introduce you to my cat. Those oh. are her cats. That's Hollywood. Hollywood. And Mango. And that's Mango. Mr. Mango. Mr. I like Mango. the names. Okay. okay I like well, the thank names you. very much. We could do a, we could do a play date. Marishka, we, we love you. Or <laughs> not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. We love Happy you. everything. Yep. Thank you. The 25th season of Law & Order SVU premieres tonight at 9 right here on NBC. Hello. Hello. Okay, coming up next, meet the family ready to completely transform their lives this year. And we're going to help them right after this. Oh. Marishka. Marishka. You make me laugh. This is your favorite Not cake. You. To today, so happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Get back. Here we go. Mom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday! We got an awesome crowd, y'all. January is the time for fresh starts, clean slates, and big changes, and that is exactly 
what we are hoping to give one amazing family okay, this year. We can't wait for you all to meet the Jacobs family. Like many of us, they are feeling overwhelmed with parenting, work, wellness. We're going to chat with them in a moment. But first, let's hear a little bit more about their story. Hi, my name is Danaya Jacobs, and this is my husband, Anthony Jacobs. Our daughter, Jada, she's 15, and our son, Lennox, who's four. A lot of guys will not admit when they're overwhelmed. They feel like they have to just build this armor of we have it all. At the end of the day, I have to make sure that I'm the foundation for my family. In the back of my head, I'm like, holy man, how are we gonna get this done? My wife is having a hard time with the four-year-old. How can I fix that? My daughter is having a hard time with schooling. How can I fix that? The sink upstairs is leaking. How do I fix that? We have this toddler boy and this teenage girl, and if anyone has experienced either of those spaces, you know that they both can be very challenging. I feel like 2024 came by really fast, and Jada on her way to high school went by super, super fast, and I don't want to miss it because my brain is so focused on projecting forward. I'm someplace else when I should be right here. So feeling connected is going to be really important to me in this year. With Lennox, he isn't a gentle kid. So gentle parenting is not an option. So we have to find a happy medium wow. with him. So any advice that I can get with both of them in these two very unique spaces would be super helpful in 2024. I was eating lunch in the carpool line to pick up our son. And one of the administrators said, you don't have time to eat lunch? And I sort of didn't even think about it. And I realized how even simple things like that, I don't prioritize for myself. I played sports really uh, from the age of eight years old all the way through college. I'm very competitive. My mind says, hey, you can do this. And then I try to sit up or stand up and my body said, wait a minute, slow down. Happy birthday. I just celebrated my 50th birthday, and I still want to be around for my four-year-old when he's 18 and 20, 25. We have this really cool bike downstairs. Dust off the screen. And I stood next to the bike, but I haven't committed to getting on the bike. So I'm having this internal conversation with myself that getting on the bike is the next step. Candy Connections is a mobile <laughs> cotton candy business where we show up in our local mall with cotton candy and all different flavors that we make ourselves. Anthony is the engineer of all the flavors. I just come up with a lot of ideas and hope that he can figure it out. I think the big pivot for us in 2024 is like still growing and expanding, but doing less of the physical manual work so that we can spend more time together yeah. as a family. Definitely 2024, we see big things for us. And I know that for things to shift, that means that we have to shift and we have to make different decisions. I'm completely committed to that in 2024 because it, it just felt like this is the time. 2024 is our, our year. year. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Welcome in, family. We're so happy you guys are here. Thank I you. bet you there are people watching right now saying, wait a minute, 2024 yes. is my yeah. year, too. Why did you decide, like, now is our time? Anthony turned 50 uh -huh. at the end of last year. Yeah. So that's a big milestone. Yeah. Right? So you kind of have to stop and pause. I kept asking him, how does it feel? Yeah, how does 50? it feel? I still feel like I'm 24. Of yeah, course exactly. you do. My back feels like I'm 64. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're an athlete, and yeah. I know that health is such a priority. Yeah. Are you ready to be held accountable? Oh, yeah, definitely. Accountability is the biggest thing in my family. Uh, number one, we, uh, we're very competitive across the board mm -hmm. so this was a this is a big time that you know we feel like we want to hold ourselves accountable you, you uh, want to make big myself. changes yeah. though in, transform. In, in parenting yes. you want to transform your parenting you want to transform your business because you feel like you could improve upon that yes. mm -hmm. what's lacking in the business department it's we do everything we wear every it's single much. hat yeah. in our business yeah. and we're typically dragging the kids yeah. when we're doing all these things and trying to pop fun into yeah. all of uh -huh. it but ultimately um it's taking over our lives and Look my wife is the now. dreamer yeah yes so whatever she dreams <laughs> i end up having to build that yes so she dreams too much so i'm like float now <laughs> Yeah. Um, and can we just say Jada, Jada, uh, Lennox. Lennox is trying to feed Jada a raspberry. She's not yeah. into it. She's like, oh. Jada, are you proud of your parents from he trying to take cat. this change? Yeah, they've been doing really good, I think. Cat. He's been getting on his bike a little. <laughs> I see 
seen him get on the bike a little with his like trash bag suit thing. Oh, oh trash, trash bag suit. It off. <laughs> the sweat a trash it bag suit. All right. So you think your parents could 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 improve things at home? Mm-hmm. Uh, we should. We used to go outside a no. lot, but yeah. then they was like, "Oh, it's cold," but it really wasn't cold. It was only like 50 degrees. Yeah. So I want to go outside a little that's, bit. More. You want to go outside? Uh, that, by the way, that's my New Year's goal. I to like be that. Out in nature. All right. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. We have an incredible plan with a few surprises to help the Jacobs family transformation. It will help y'all too. Yeah. Coming up right after this. All right. Let's try. Right. introduce you to the Jacobs family and like so many of us they want to make some big transformations in 2024 especially when it comes to these things parenting wellness and their family business all right but here's the thing they can't do it alone no they can't so we have called in some a-list experts to help are y'all ready to meet your transform 2024 team we ready. are all right. Right. come on <laughs> Grace Bastidas is editor-in-chief of Parents, the nearly 100-year-old brand reaching millions of caregivers each month. A bilingual New Yorker raising two daughters, she's also host of the podcast, That New Mom Life. Grace is an editor, writer, a parenting expert, and she's ready to make a house call to the Jacobs home. Ali Love is an inspirational oh. powerhouse. <laughs> Rise and let's go! For the last eight years as a Peloton instructor, she's led millions of writers during thousands of classes. She's also founder and CEO of Love Squad, a community created to motivate followers to live healthier, fuller lives. So as a contributor right here on Today, Ali shares the stories and habits that keep her on track. Her next task, to get the Jacobs family back on a healthy track themselves. Let's do it, let's do it. Kendra Scott is a designer, founder, and executive chairwoman. In 2002, she created Kendra Scott Jewelry with only $500. Two decades later, her commitment to innovation and quality has turned her small startup into a billion dollar business. Today, Kendra has more than 2,600 employees and 130 stores nationwide. She's a guest shark on the reality show Shark Tank. And now this shark is ready to sink her teeth into helping the Jacobs family grow their small business. All right, come on out, Transform in 2024 team. Come on out, Ali Love, Grace <laughs> Christina. in a little bit. First all right, of all, reaction. Come Anthony, come on, come on, come on. you were freaking out a little. What do you think? Team. Yeah, I was freaking out. Oh, what do you think about a, these women? This is amazing. Allie, I started Peloton because of you. Oh, thank um, you. Couldn't get past the half, the half hour class, though. But <laughs> I'm looking to, you know, go forward. I'm, uh -huh. yeah, I'm excited. All right, we're going to talk to each. Okay, okay, so first of all, Allie, let's yes. start with you. Yeah. These guys want to get back on the 
health track? What do you, what do you, what's some guidelines for that? So I think three things. Uh, you have the framework, so we're going to focus on just updating those habits. Small habits can make great impact, and we know that. So it's looking at what your days look like and how we can tweak it a little bit. The second thing is really important when we look at the overall scope. It's like, and we talked about this, we're going to find the fun. What, where's the fun in what you do? And then most importantly, and the third thing that I love to think about is like when we're thinking of consumption or overall eating habits, how we explore that, we're going to add in instead of taking away. Most people think we're going to take away a year. <laughs> yes. We're going to do less. Yes. No, we're going to do more of the things that you like and continue to do more of the things that but you like. But this is why so. she's yeah. our expert. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. 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 let's talk about parenting. Yes. I know you heard their thoughts, a teenager, yeah. a toddler. Yeah. That isn't easy. Yes, they are. Their hands are full between the business, homeschooling Jada, and raising kids of two very different ages. So that's definitely Hello. tough. So we are here to help you alleviate some of that pressure that you're feeling right now as parents. We want to do all the things and can sometimes feel like we're falling short. Mm -hmm. So I'm here for you mm -hmm. and we'll find ways for you to reconnect as a family mm -hmm. and maybe let go of some of that mom guilt, which we all feel. Yes, yes all we're right. letting it yes. go. Kendra Scott, they, when the, your name was I mean, said, they screamed. We freaked. <laughs> By the way, like free, can we just yes. look at, I know Miss, she's wearing it. Miss, Miss, I know. We were, I mean, well, and what's crazy is that you guys did an event yes. for our store we opening, did. Kendra Gives Back event. We, yes. we utilized you guys twice yes. already. Yes. Yes. So this is serendipitous. It it's sure is. Met. Well, yeah. we know we that nobody is better at business yes. than you. You've well, let me it. tell you, I started just like you all. I started out of the extra bedroom of my house with a newborn baby. Hmm. So I understand where you are, what you're going through, but I really love how mission driven you are. My business is all about fashion for philanthropy and what you're doing to empower hmm. youth. All of it. I'm so excited. Excited. So we're going to take the best parts of your business and really focus on that to help you grow the things that are working and then maybe fine tune some of the things that you're struggling with to figure out how we can solve right, those This issues. is going to be a hands on thing. Yeah. Yes. You're going mean, to spend this, time with each yeah, of these women. We're going to see how this all unfolds and we're going to track it. OK. <laughs> yes. Is that yes. cool? Yes. Yes. Okay, so yes. We're going to so check excited. in with you every week yeah. of this Ooh. month. Yeah. OK. Yeah. If that's some, okay with yes. you, please. Yes. We're going to hold we'll y'all accountable. knocking on your door. Yes. But also, these women are going to be here for every step of cool. the way. We Thank you, all. guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Coming up, a delicious Mediterranean meal your whole family will love. Coming up. After this. <laughs> Did you get excited about the Yeah, yeah. I think you just like my I'm what I mean. Oh, I have a four-year-old. We're about to take chicken to the next level with Mike Solomonov. Okay, Mike is the chef and owner of KFAR and Laser Wolf in Brooklyn and Zahav, right? <laughs> yes. Say right? And Philadelphia. Did we yes. get them all right? Okay, you how do you say them great. all? Say them. Kafar, Laser Wolf, uh, Zahav. I said Kafar, but Kafar. We're about to open Dizengoff in what? Philadelphia. Yeah. You're rolling. You should come to the opening. Okay, way, we will. Okay, done all right. Done. <laughs> I don't want to twist your arm. Okay. Um, okay, first of all, this chicken looks amazing. Tell us what we've yeah, got. Yeah, okay, so this is super simple. This is our Zatar chicken. We are going to be serving this at Dizengoff. Okay. Um, we do salt. This is so How easy. You get the chicken to look like this. So you what actually just here? asked your butcher to do is it, too. What it's, do you call that? It's not spatchcock. It's boned out, but it's like on the way to being spatchcock. It's, it's spatchcock, and then you take out the backbone. So there's, so no, there's no stock. backbone. What's no this? backbone. That's Zatar. So One throw pudding. a ton of that on there. Okay. All right, the key to this with like a lot of the meat that I cook, but certainly chicken, is I like to salt it 
for a little bit, okay? Like I like to let it sit. It mm -hmm. permeates how long, the how meat. Long? I mean, this you can do, yeah, throw in the onions, throw in the garlic, throw in whatever you want, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I like this can actually sit for like a couple days or a week in the fridge, okay. and the salt goes in and permeates the meat. Okay. There's nothing worse than like roasting a piece of meat. The exterior is great, and the interior is so right? true. So this is what we want, and it's simple. Okay. And very, is that chicken stock? Uh, no. This is not. Oil? This is a little bit of oil. And you can and a little bit. Are you putting oil in this too? Yeah, you can do a little bit of oil on there, but yeah. you can also let it sit. It's not really that big of a deal. Do you have a preference deal. when it comes to oils? I like to use grapeseed to sear, but actually I use so much olive oil. Yeah. And even people are like weird about searing in olive oil. Yeah. As long as you don't exceed 360 degrees and get it to smoke, yeah. I like to fry things in olive oil. So you've got so. our cast iron pan. Yeah, so and cast iron. So oh, we're just going to go. listen. Exactly. Listen. The sizzle is important. The now smell. what we're going to do is sear the skin side down so the skin gets crispy. Smell that. And we're going to oh. take the whole cast iron and put it in the oven oh. and roast it just like that. So you actually only have one thing Oh, you to only clean. do it on one side this way? We're going to actually flip it after about okay. eight minutes. Okay. But you could actually do the whole okay. time if you want. Not a big deal. But the key is just this cast iron pan. Now, once it gets out. Once it gets out, I like to even do more. as I, Exactly. Yeah, do it. Okay. Dude, that was great. Okay. And then we also have a little bit of fried garlic over okay. here. You've done this before, right? Not well. Oh, yeah. I, I this. <laughs> Not very much. A little bit of fried garlic on top just because I like the extra oomph, yeah. right? Okay. Um, fried onion, fried garlic is always very, very good. good. But this is so easy. This is spice blunt. This is za'atar. Mm. This is salt. Mm. And this is like properly roasted chicken. Wow. Right? Mm. So, Flavorful so simple. and yummy. Exactly. That is amazing. This makes amazing mm. leftovers Wait, what restaurant well. are you serving this? Uh, we're going to be serving this at Dizengoff in Philadelphia that opens in a couple weeks. Okay. Cool. And you're going to be actually working there that yeah, night, that's right. so I'll be there. you're on the schedule, okay? I just want to make sure done. I know what we're serving. All right, so listen, fried, uh, we're going to actually caramelize these onions over here, mm -hmm. all right? And very, very simple. I mean, onions cook down with a little bit of oil for a very, very long time, so they get super, super Should I add sound. this, too? No, not yet. Oh. Okay, what we're going to do is deglaze a little bit of vinegar. Yummy. All right, we've got labane, which is like um, yogurt. Arabic yogurt, exactly, mm -hmm. like Greek yogurt, uh, that's been strained, and it is amazing. You we're going to add the onions. onions. We're going to add salt. Let's add a little bit of the raw onion, too. Mm -hmm. Is okay. that dill? It's chives and dill. Throw it in. Okay. A little lemon juice. All right, let's see some black pepper. Oh, and it's basically yeah, our, like, Thank French you. onion dip. Now, yeah, this goes exactly. with crudite. This goes with pita. This can be spread on sandwiches. And it is simple and easy and My God. delicious, right? You said you were going to be eating this during the shoot. I want to live in this. You can. Mm -hmm. You can live in it. Wait, you can why, bathe it, in it. It's why is so it sweet? Good. It's yummy. It's sweet from the caramelized onion. onions, right? So, so simple. Nice. And this is a great dip for, like, Super Bowl for the week. It's, it's healthier it than, a, so than a good. typical one, too, right? Because of the Yes, the you get it again. very healthy. All and right. I will see you all soon. Oh, my gosh. It's my Will we so be serving this when we're we there, Mike? We I'm sorry be. about the eagles. Okay, no, Mike. it's okay. Too soon. Go birds. I still love I haven't heard still matter. And by the way, the Cowboys lost, and I felt like it was karma. Yeah. Okay, we can scan the QR code right here or go to today.com slash food. Thank you, Mike. We'll be back right after this. Mm. That's just what right this. Great show today. It was such a great mm -hmm. show, and tomorrow, y'all, it's time for our epic cold plunge. We're going all in. Plus, Donna's got a knock knock surprise brewing. Oh, and the hottest trips to take in 2024.
ladies, ladies in blue. We all came separate and we all dressed the same. So I don't know what that means, but good uh, minds think alike. Yeah. <laughs> Navy. <laughs> you know that I talk a lot about health, and I was saying to um, my friends that, of course, health at your age, at your age, and at my age is very different. What are the issues that your age group is talking about? Well, I'm 33, so majority of my friends in my age group are thinking about having kids, having kids, or on their second or third child. I feel like the thing that we talk the most about in our friend group and also on BDA Baby is just overall burnout. Um, and that's burnout with your kids at home, it's burnout in relationships, and burnout with trying to make everything perfect, your friendships perfect, your work life perfect. It's just like an overall sense of burnout and a need for support in that. So when you go to the, your doctor, for a checkup or when you're talking to your doctor about burnout are you talking to her about sex are you talking to her about pregnancies i feel like it's definitely hormones pregnancy right now at this phase of my life there's a lot of questions now when i go in about mental health specific questions how are you feeling at home how are you feeling in pregnancies how are you feeling postpartum there's a lot more awareness and conversation about that with doctors i feel like and also in my friend group then I feel like you reflect on having that kind of conversation when you are our age. When I talk to you, you're talking about a kind of a whole different group of women who haven't had children, who are uh, talking about, should I freeze my eggs? Uh, how do I not get pregnant? Or should I be getting pregnant? Or should I be freezing my eggs? You're talking about PCOS. You're talking about endometriosis. You're talking about different things than I hear your age group are talking. So what is your group? talking about young women that you talk to? What do they talk about when they talk about women's health? Yeah, well, it's interesting because I know you're saying, well, I'm 33 and given my age and I'm thinking to myself, I'm 32 <laughs> and given my age. We're so far apart. Yeah. <laughs> But my friends and our conversations like could not be more different. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends are working and trying to kind of figure out big life choices as to whether they want to freeze their eggs or a lot of them are, you know, not married yet. So they're kind of struggling with questions about whether they're with the partner they want to marry and if they're making the right choices there, struggling with financial issues. I have one girlfriend or two girlfriends now that are married and the rest of them are really just trying to grapple with how to be in the healthiest relationship they can be in, how do they feel their best, whether it's mentally, emotionally or physically and kind of what that, you know, lifestyle and world looks like for them. It just feels like a couple years ago that most of our conversations were about birth control. Right. You know, yeah. what's the right form of birth control? Should you be on the pill? Should you be on an IUD? What's new out there? Then all of a sudden it jumped to sh my gynecologist is telling me to freeze yeah, my eggs yeah. like overnight. <laughs> but it seems to jump really quickly from like your early 20s. Like that happened to me because like, I went in after you had a baby and I went to my gynecologist and I was like, do I need to be freezing my eggs? Like, how much time do I have? And she, I think I was 27 or just turned 28, and she was like, you have so much time, don't worry about it. I go in for 30, and she's like, so let's talk now about freezing your eggs. And I was like, hold on a second. I thought I had some time here. And every year it gets more like, I think we really should freeze your eggs. It's like an insurance policy. The pressure is on, meet with this person, which I, to me, I was definitely unprepared for. Do you feel overwhelmed by all of these topics about health? You're talking about birth control, freezing eggs, infertility, endometriosis, PCOS, pregnancy loss yeah. is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's overwhelming. I think that it's beautiful to be able to have the level of openness that I feel like our generation has with friends, but being able to have the support that and the openness that you have with friends is, I think, great. How big is sexual health in your generation? Like when I was your age, I never went, well, first of all, I had a male OBGYN. I know that's shocking to I both. I cannot even imagine. <laughs> I just don't, to me, it's also like you want somebody who's able to relate to well, there how weren't, you're feeling. I, I agree, of but I know that you were like, of I can't course. believe you. I was like, well, there were no women, you know, OBGYNs at the time. You know, I remember well after having four kids, I talked to my OBGYN and he said, you know, how's your sex life? And I was like, oh my God, I want to talk to you about that, you know? <laughs> but you guys speak pretty openly about all of that, right? I mean, we speak openly about it, but also 
you know, we've spoken to you about those things, yeah. and that's definitely generational differences sure. because you would never have talked to your mom about never. that. Never. So. Well, I think there's also, luckily, like Catherine was saying, I think that there's so much more information today than there ever was. So there's just, there's a lot more awareness, I think, now. And I think, luckily, actually, from people in your generation, we're raising the alarm about, I'm having these health consequences right now. Could it be from the food I'm eating? Could it be from the products I've been using since I was a teenager? Mm -hmm. And I think that, luckily, people have been responding with putting in a lot of money into research about these things. You, Christina, have done these films, one dealing with Adderall, one dealing with Xanax. How big are those issues in your age group? Yeah, I mean, the movies also sprouted out from my personal experience uh, mm -hmm. with medications. I knew I wasn't the only person going through those experiences. I think that the mental health landscape has evolved so much just even within the past few years, and the mm -hmm. level of awareness is amazing and so now we're able to have conversations around these topics without the kind of weight of am i being judged what are they thinking about the fact that i'm taking these medications but i actually find a lot more people my age today going into therapy whether it's like cognitive behavioral therapy or going on retreats or trying mm -hmm. acupuncture or trying to change their lifestyle or their diet to do all those things before they start taking medication. The other thing that seems to be kind of when we talk about women's health, there's been a real surge in uh, women and alcohol, particularly women, you know, kind of who've had kids maybe, or women who find themselves in their 30s and 40s, a huge uptick in that and that conversation around your health. Uh, do you hear a lot about that? I feel like that's all over social media. It's all over social media. All over social media is like, you know, drinking when you have kids, drinking when your kids go to sleep, looking forward to that drink at the end of the day because of the chaos that is in your life between working, between going and, you know, being a present parent, being a partner, like there's so much. Um, I saw somebody actually post recently about, you know, kind of going against that because so many people were posting about going to games with you know their children's soccer games and having alcohol in their cups or being able to go uh, after you drop your kid off at school and getting a drink in the morning like those kinds of conversations and somebody recently posted we see people doing this but it's actually not funny yeah. um, there's a larger conversation to be had there which is why do you find yourself needing to have that drink so we have you know in our family we're I think, you know, not the same as everybody that we talk about alcohol a lot. You've always raised yeah. us with a very open communication about alcohol, about drugs, about what that does to you. Um, also understanding that, you know, as we grew up, that we would experiment with certain things and that we could be lucky enough to be open with you and honest and also have our siblings in that. But also, you know, there is, as you get to certain chapters of life, there's seems to me especially since entering motherhood that there's definitely like a big push of moms being like these kids they're crazy like i need to have a drink and yeah. that's something that i see widespread across america How big a deal is it like, you know, 
you're at 26, everybody goes, you know, they're having to be responsible for their own insurance, like finding a doctor who's in the network, how much this all costs, uh, foregoing doctor's appointments because of the cost of it. Because yeah. I know a lot of, actually, it's unfortunate, I know a lot of girlfriends that forego kind of annual physicals. A lot of times because they either can't afford insurance or they're not getting it through their job. Um, I think a lot of them are lucky to get it through their job, though, too. But I think that just what you're talking about, kind of the advocacy and awareness of trying to find someone that's right for you. Yeah. But also something that I personally struggle with myself is, like, you have to be your own self-advocate. And that takes a lot of like internal kind of fortitude and confidence in yourself because you can easily be swayed or easily be silenced in a lot of ways when it comes to being with a doctor or practitioner. And I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with trying to find the right doctor or trying to find the right prescription or trying to find the right PT or whatever it is, the right acupuncturist, is being able to really now at this point understand that you have to be your own advocate when you look at women um, my age or women who are in their 50s women who start talking about aging uh, does that freak you out or do you think like uh oh or um, I already I, feel like I'm having the conversation about aging, but I'm also, you, you, I've been like, right. since I was 16, I'm like, do I see a wrinkle coming in? Oh my God. I say to my friends, oh my gosh, these girls in their 30s talk more about being old than I do. I mean, we are really lucky that we have, like, we look at you and I'm like, that's goals, you know, like you Thank are you, very on top of your mental health, your physical health, yeah. your spiritual health. I think, you know, you and dad both are incredible examples of people who are aging with grace and doing it really, really well. I'll let Christina speak for herself, but I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm excited. I think like you-, you You're excited to get older. Well, I think if you are given the ability to get older, looking at it as a gift, you know, yeah. like yeah. You, you talk about it in a way where it shifts people's perspective, not like, oh my god i'm getting it's like oh my god i'm getting old it's i get to get older right. and i get to be on this planet and watch my children live their lives and build their lives and see grandchildren and have fun adventures and have girls nights and you know go on these fun trips with my family and and you know also be there to be in communication with my kids as they grow and they find their own interests do you feel like there's that we have an open communication about your guy's health journey, do you feel like you get all your questions answered or you know what to expect? Or? Super open. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree. Like Catherine said, I think that you and dad are kind of goals and have set a great example for all of us as to kind of really how to engage with aging, how to embrace it and how to really, you know, live life to the fullest up until like the very end, like grandma and grandpa did. Yeah. yeah. And I think also like we're really lucky to be able to have open and honest communication yeah. with yeah. our mom. I, yeah. I think we are really lucky that we can come to you and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Did you ever feel that way? Or do you know what I should do if I feel that way? And you have always been really open with sharing all of your experiences throughout yeah. your entire life and beyond about mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and just being open about it.
award-winning actress Anne Hathaway has been a force in Hollywood for more than two decades. Hi. The movie star is known for her wide-ranging talents both on and off the big screen, from being an advocate for women's rights to a fashion icon. Feel free to call me Annie, by the way, if you want. And at 40 years old, the mother of two is embracing who she is. So a couple of years ago, you said, what did I say? when I look back on my 20s, I just remember being afraid of everything. Mm -hmm. And in my 30s, I'm actually excited about things. Yeah. So now you've entered your 40s. Mm -hmm. What would you say about it so far? I'm cherishing, you know, I'm cherishing. Um, I'm, I'm right at that point where I actually do know I have a much better sense of how I like to do things and a much, much deeper respect that there's more than one way to do things. So I really respect how other people want to do things. And I also am really excited about pursuing my own take on things. I'm so much better at sharing. Mm. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm kinder to myself. I feel mm. like I'm kinder to others. And I just, I don't know, it's, can I get super nerdy for a second? I'm here for okay. all of it. So if you think about culture, we think about culture, mm -hmm. we often think about it as it relates to art, books, music, all of those wonderful things that are humanities okay. oriented. But culture is also a scientific thing, like in a Petri dish, like you drop okay. something in a Petri dish and you watch it develop. Okay. Well, the more we live in a culture in which age is accepted, not put down, not sell, not just that, but just accepted as a function of life, the more opportunity we have to develop as people mm. for like for the entirety of our lives. And that's a gift. Such an amazing opportunity to get to talk about all of this as I'm living it. Mm. Because I don't have a lot of wisdom about it yet. I have 40 years of being alive and you mm -hmm. know, hopefully I'll have way more than that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm trying to bring all the parts of myself with me wherever I go. I have a friend, we love each other so much, and we sit there and we watch our kids, and we have a phrase that we say to each other, which is, God willing, future grandmas. Mm. So for me, the idea that who I'm going to be, if I'm lucky enough, mm. lucky enough to be a woman experiencing age in her 80s, mm. I'm building her right now. And I get really excited about that. And that it doesn't mean you ever land anywhere. It just means you're always developing. You're just too cute to be true. Growing up as a teenager in Hollywood, Hathaway quickly rose to fame, becoming a household name. I started in this business when I was 17 years old mm. uh, in a very different era. And there was this perception that there was going to be a cliff. And that cliff was a really young age. Mm. And the world's changed since then. I'm like, whoa, no one's ever had as many opportunities as me. Mm. Like just in terms of just something as like how nourished I am mm. in my life, like just just nourishment and the education that I, I was exposed to. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to make it about that. I'm aware of how privileged I am. Mm. What I'm trying to say is I was invested in and I'm not ready to give up that investment just mm. because of a number, you know, and especially not because of a number that exists out in the world that someone else has a feeling about. I'm interested in my own feelings about it. I'm mm. interested and and I'm interested in defining it for what it is. And then I'm really excited for someone younger than me to define it for themselves mm. too. And in that sense, don't you feel like we've always been passing the baton to each other? We're all starting to say, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. What about what I think? <laughs> <laughs> what about what I think about what I, I want to do? That. Because I, love that. I don't know how you feel, but do you feel like you're getting better? Are you kidding me? Like, We're just getting started. I, you know? No, Thank absolutely. You. And Thank I wouldn't you. trade anything. You get into a place in your life where you're like, I don't feel, I don't feel new in every single situation. I feel like now I can actually focus on other people. Mm. I can focus on how to take care of other people. I can take other people in. Mm. Whereas when I, you know, was first starting out, I was so nervous. And so, I mean, it's still nervous. I can feel it. For Hathaway, age is nothing but a number. Let's say on social media, I post a picture, you post a picture, and people say, oh, you're aging gracefully, or oh, you look so good for your age. Do I say, thank you, or am I leaning into it by doing that? Are we leaning into it by, think, are we leaning into the hype of aging? I don't think about age. Hmm. But I don't. No, I don't. this is good. No, Tell I me. I don't think about it. I never have. I think some of it was because I was a teenager who spent a lot of time around adults. Hmm. And as a result, I had to get really comfortable with the idea that I was a different age than other people, hmm. you know? And so, and, and the gifts in my life that have resulted because I was friends with somebody who was 
30, 40, 50 years older than me, mm. you know? And so I just, I just think that's people's way of talking. I, I think talking about someone's appearance is a really personal thing. To me, aging is another word for living. Ooh. And so if people want to pay you a compliment, it's nice. But also whatever the hype is, I'm interested in what's beyond the concept of hype. I completely get that. And now I'm thinking, how do I put that into play? Who do we have on the other day? I talked to Michelle Yeoh. Uh, um, she's uh, awesome. She's the right? coolest. She's the actual coolest. Winning awards. Um, who else do we talk to? Jamie Lee Curtis, you know? And so mm -hmm. I feel like, and again, I don't know if it's just that I'm more aware because of the season that I'm in, in this 40 club, or if we are collectively showing that we're just, we're, we're still in it and there's mm -hmm. so much more. I think, and the question is, and why would you assume we wouldn't be in it? Mm. Why was it ever assumed that we couldn't be in it? And I think that, look, I, the world's a big place. There's a lot of people in it, but I'm really happy to be talking to you about it. And um, all you can ever do is be present with somebody and be supportive of them and uplift them, right? I, absolutely. You mentioned the word presence. How do you stay present? What do you do? Well, um, you forgive yourself when you don't. I feel like that's number one. I feel like the first thing, the first like rule of thumb in everything is just know that perfection is an illusion. And just because you're not doing it perfectly doesn't mean you're not doing it. We're made very nervous by the idea that we're doing it wrong. I get made so nervous by it. It's a really, I think we all maybe have a loud critical voice in our, in our heads. I don't know where it comes from. And that's one of the other great things about aging is you get more time to speak to that voice. You get more time to heal it. You get more time to soften it and work with it. But like, look, I'm fully aware that I'm burst out in hives right now. Like it's when I get really nervous. I get really, really nervous when I talk. But you're talking about something so amazing. What makes, what's the nervous part of it? The nervous part is my journey. Oh. And so I feel like, and I don't know where it comes from, but I don't judge it. Um, I'm, I'm dancing with it. And part of it, one of the things that I do to stay really present is I have practices that allow me to be kind to myself in moments when maybe in the past I wouldn't have known how to be kind to myself. Mm. And so I don't think there's any one way to do it. I think some people pray, some people chant, some people take a deep breath, some people go for a walk, some people um, shop. Like, yeah. I think I just think that or all of the above. <laughs> maybe a little bit all of the above. Maybe the connective thread through all of that is just do it gratefully. Mm. Maybe that's how you be present in it is you add something to it to allow it to play with something because it can play off of your stress or it can play off of your gratitude. Mm. And I feel really excited to be at an age now where I feel like, you know what, I'm not so interested in the stress part anymore. I think I tried that. I think I did that. I think we did our dance. But what if I can really set my gaze in the future on dancing with my gratitude? I don't know what's going to happen, mind you. I don't know if this is going to work, but I know that I feel better and I'm having a much better time and I'm, and I'm having an easier time doing it that way, if that makes any sense. No, it does. So then does it help you then, let's say you're juggling the kiddos or you're doing a project, like it, does it help you kind of be here now, if you will? There's so many things. I feel like there's, there's, there's so, so, so many things that, and, and again, it's like really, really, it's just different for everybody. And I think we're all looking for that magic bullet that's going to explain it and make it really, really simple and let it be clear. And that's, there's the line and you're either doing it or you're not. But that to me is, I think the quicker you can find something really funny, you know, the, 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 the more open you can be to it. And, and that's the thing. It's, there, it's never going to look a certain way or be a certain way or feel a certain way. It's all going to be happening at the same time. And you're lucky if you have a lot of stuff going on. And the question is, do you want to, I don't know, do you want to bank your shot off of anxiety and stress or do you want to bank it off gratitude? Sometimes you're not in control over your anxiety and your stress and that's okay. But if you are in control of it, why not the other thing?
Now, the movie star has taken on a new role in beauty as the global brand ambassador of Shiseido's Vital Perfection skincare line. Potential has no age. What inspired you to partner with Shiseido? Oh, I mean, it's always, it's always very exciting when, you know, you're aware of someone before they're aware of you. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you know, that makes you feel good. So I've been aware of Shiseido for a while and I was really excited that they thought that I matched their values. Mm. I was really excited because uh, they're a company that's 130 years old. They have a legacy. I find them to be incredibly thoughtful, intelligent, caring, refined. And I was just thrilled and excited that they felt that I could be a part of that. I love it. There are a lot of projects you could take on, but this one it seems like you're passionate about in so many ways. I didn't know I was so passionate about it. Like mm. it just seemed like a really fun thing to do. And then when we got started to get into the process and discussing what we, what we were going to say with it, and then they said, oh, so we think the tagline would be potential has no age. Mm. And I was just like, I love that and I love putting that out there and then I love to see where it goes next mm. you know it's because all we can do is um, make the world better for each other for ourselves and for anybody to our, the best of our knowledge and to anybody that's coming up behind us and I love watching these young people who have so much more freedom than mm. I had I love 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 watching it and I don't know just imagine what they could do if they never had the concept of a cliff or a shelf life or any of those things. Before Annie and I parted ways. We're lightning round, ready? Okay, okay. Are you a texter or a caller? I'm both, but uh, but I'd love texting. Staying in or going out? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> a quote you live by. I live by a lot of quotes. Okay. Big wheels keep on turning, proud Mary keeps on burning. Just came I to mind. That. Okay, I like I've it. I've been singing it all day. Favorite song of the moment? I'm really into Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, that's a good one. Break My Soul by Beyonce. Mm, that's a fun one. And Taylor Swift, Antihero. Oh, those are good. Standout fashion moment. What my heart is telling me right now is my wedding dress by Valentino. That's a good one. Which wasn't a fashion moment. That was a life That's moment. a life moment. Best advice you've ever received. Oh, no, not ever. Sound um, advice or something that, you know, resonates. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to sound like such a cheese ball. No, I'm no. so sorry. No, this is awful. This is awful. But it's really good advice. What is it? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's really yeah. earnest is what it is. I know I know how earnest that is, and I know this, but I can't help but think that on the Today Show, you guys don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind it at all. And honestly, it's just good stuff. So good. <laughs> That's really good. Today, more than 20 years into her career, Anne Hathaway doesn't take anything for granted. To say that you started when you were 17 years old, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about life in our 40s, that's lucky, and I'm aware that I can't think of many people who get to say that, and I don't want to miss that. Felix, obviously. One of the most. No, no, the most. The most she is the, the most, most decorated, decorated track and time. field. So I just want to go back just for a second. When did you start running? I mean, were you like, hey, do you want to race me at like seven and just running down the street? Or I actually wasn't. And really? I, I had a different start than most Olympians. I kind of stumbled into it. I literally did not find track and field until I was in high school. And the only reason that I found it was because I was at a new school and I didn't know anybody. And my dad and my brother were like, well, you should go out for the track team to like make friends. We're like, okay, okay all right. Wow. 
And so I did, and I fell in love with the sport. I found those friends, but then I did just- Did you find out you were faster than the kids who've been running since they were seven? I found out I was pretty fast, yeah. But you had never done any sort just of- Just like backyard races and like field days and things like that. You know, I knew it was quick, but I had never done anything in an organized fashion. And when did you discover that you were not just fast, but Olympic fast? <laughs> It was like the middle of high school. It happened very quickly. The middle of high school, my coach, he would enter me in these races with professionals. And I started winning them. And so then it was kind of a whirlwind from then on. And since that point that I started track to my first Olympics was a little over four years. So tell me, do you remember your first Olympic race? Like, take me to the first time. Yeah, yeah. My first Olympics, it was in Athens. Um, everything was new. I was 18 years old. I didn't know what to expect. It was fun. And the thing I remember most, I ran my heart out. I got a silver medal. And as an 18-year-old, I was very disappointed because... You know, I came for gold. Wow. <laughs> and I remember that, you know, we got the flags and everyone was doing the victory laps. And my mom met me on the other side and she was like, so disappointed. She was like, you didn't do your victory lap. And I had never been to the Olympics before. I did not know that, you know, all top three get to do a victory lap. Yeah. So she was, she was not happy with me. <laughs> but you, you didn't miss a victory lap after that. I, no, 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 no. Well, I was always on that lap. <laughs> of, of all of the... the high moments of your career, all the highlights, and there are many. Is there one that sort of stands out? Definitely. I would have to say Tokyo, my last Olympics. And it's surprising because it, it, for me, it wasn't my most successful, but it was the most meaningful. I overcame a lot of adversity to get there. And for the first time, I stood on that line and it wasn't about the medal. It wasn't about the time. It was about being a representation for women and mothers. Oh. And, um, and I got to do it in my own shoes also. So it's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> so for those for people who may not know your journey specifically, talk to me about the steps. So your first Olympics, you were 18. Yeah, I, I think as I, time went on, you know, when you're 18 and there are no expectations, there's not that much pressure. That shifts very quickly. My next Olympics, you know, I was the favorite. I was expected to win. I was navigating life as a college student at USC and also a professional athlete traveling the world. And so I think it got heavy and I got another silver medal at my second Olympics and I, I was not happy. Um, <laughs> so I think just navigating disappointment and defeat and coming back from that. And then I, I kept going and just life kept happening. And, and then I started a family and I went through that whole ordeal, not really being supported through that um, and fighting through that hardship. And so that last and final Olympics was really about overcoming and saying that women deserve better. Um, we deserve better support. And so it just, I don't know, I, I think each games taught me a new lesson. When you said not being supported when you, were, when you were pregnant, what do you mean by that? I went through a whole ordeal, a fight over maternity protections. I had been sponsored by Nike for almost a decade. And um, when I decided to start a family, something that had been happening in our sport for so long is that women, their, their contracts were being paused. A lot of women hid their pregnancies out of fear that they would not secure a new contract. And so I found myself in that same position. I, I hid my pregnancy. I trained at four o'clock in the morning when it was still dark. And eventually um, my fight really turned towards asking for protection around maternity. And what that means is for track and field, our contracts are performance based. So you go to the Olympics or world championships, you get a bonus. You don't go, you get a reduction. But if you're pregnant during that time, or if you just had a baby, there was nothing in place to protect you. And so what was happening is women were being reduced and reduced and pushed out of the sport. And so I, I, didn't think that was okay, and I spoke up and shared my truth. Um, I ended up walking away from the company because of that. Um, but three weeks later, after I came out with a, an op-ed in the New York Times, they changed their policy. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, today they offer 18 months for all um, female athletes, and other companies as well came forward and changed wow. their policies. So. Any regrets? Um, I mean, I wish it didn't take such a fight to make that happen, but I think, you know, it led me to where I'm supposed to be. Um, I parted ways. I decided to make my own shoes, um, and I got to run in them in the Olympics. And I think the thing that means the most to me is I, I get to tell my daughter about this, and I get to share with her that when you... Okay. Yeah, just that you need to stand up for what you believe in, and that it's not always about you. A lot of times it's about doing something for 
others and for the next generation. Through the whole journey, I, I've, I've known that one day I'll get to share with her, but she's been that motivation. And even just speaking out on this, like that's something that's so far from comfortable for me. But I think just looking at her and thinking about the world that she's going to grow up in, that's what gave me that courage. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about this, uh, this retirement that yes. you, you announced <laughs> last fall. What's the retirement chapter been like so far? Oh, it's been interesting. It's, it's been really challenging. I mean, I love the work that I'm doing now, and I feel so fulfilled. But I think the reality of, like, waking up and not having the structure of training. Like, I would wake up, and I would train for five hours a day. And... Wait, can, we, can you pause there? And can you tell us about that? I'm really curious. Yeah. Like, how does that work? So when you were in the thick of it, yeah. wake up, have a pretty normal breakfast, like a pretty time? simple, nothing crazy. My coach was never a morning person and I was grateful for okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. So I'd have a pretty normal day. I would get to training probably around nine and I would do three hours on the track. What does that mean? Like, what are you doing? So warming up and then you get to the meat and potatoes of the workout, whether that's conditioning, um, reps on the track, 600, 400, 300, How block many times workout. a week? It, yeah, you got to go every day. Oh, every day. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. Oh. You would have a recovery day. Every day. Single day. On Wednesday, you would have like a recovery day. And so that's a day where you, you know, see the massage therapist, the chiropractor. You might go for like a longer type run. I'm a sprinter. So for me, a long run is about 20 minutes. Um, wow. So yeah. And then after that, um, I would go to the gym for a couple hours. After, after that? <laughs> every day. Yeah, this is why she's the fastest in the world. So you, go, you do that, you would go to the gym, and then you come home and what? Yeah, and then recover. So ice bath, stretching, making sure that your body can take on, you know, another day of that. Wow. And then, yeah. And you do that for how many years? Yeah, 20 years. 20 years. Wow. No That's wonder you retired. So then what did it feel like after you announced your retirement to wake up Whatever the morning was that it was the first morning, you didn't have to do that. It felt really good and freeing. And I remember just like also being able to just eat what I wanted and not having any restrictions. I'm a snacker. I, I just love food in general. So that part was great. <laughs> so, I mean, do you still run? I do. Yeah. I think it's not like that, though. Not, not as intense. I okay. think I'm, I'm actually struggling with that part a little bit just because I'm switching from like this competition mode to just everyday life. And that's been hard. Oftentimes I'll find myself at the track, like just going through a brutal workout. I'm like, oh wait, I don't wow. have, I to, don't do have to do this. this. Wow. I don't have to be here right now. So I'm finding new things, you know, new ways to exercise, but it's a lifestyle and it's just a part of me. Does your little girl like to run? Yes, she does. She likes to do kind of all things. I'm trying to push her away from track as long as I can. Just, yeah. it's a tough sport. So I'm, we do all the things though. Yeah. Soccer and dance and we just do a little bit of everything. Tennis now, you've taken In up tennis. tennis. Yeah. So how did that happen? <laughs> well, so my daughter is taking tennis lessons and I was like, I think I should just try to understand the game a little bit. So I'm just at the very front end starting lessons. Um, but just seeing her do things, I was like, oh, I can try new things. I've done something for 20 years. I think I've just been out of the practice of trying things so trying does, to do how thing. old is she now she's four she's, does she i guess four is young but does she have any idea that that mommy is the most successful american <laughs> track and field athlete ever does she know I, I think she has no idea i think she just is like mom do you have my snack like <laughs> what are we doing today those are the important things to her
talk to me a little bit about wellness, what it was like maybe when you were training, but even just now. I think I just have such an appreciation for it, and it's been such a part of my life. I think I have a deeper appreciation for it now, just as a mother, but starting my day with my gratitude notebook and just... You do do that? Yeah, tell, me the, tell us the details. Yeah, I actually started during the pandemic just because I felt myself like starting off my day not with the the positive vibes that I wanted to. And there's just so much to be grateful for. So I just jot down like three things that I'm grateful for and they can be anything. And it just kind of sets the tone for, for my day and I get going from there. You also actually do these verbal affirmations with, with your little yeah. girl. I'm special. I'm special. I'm smart. I'm smart. I can do hard things. I can do hard things. I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. I just want her to be confident and empowered. And so every morning when we're going off to school, we just kind of repeat little things, whether it's like, I'm a good listener, I'm a good friend, I'm kind. And she's really taken to them now. She's like, if I forget, she's like, mom, we didn't do our affirmations. <laughs> <laughs> so she keeps me accountable. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So talk to me about your entrepreneur hat. So when did you say, you know what, maybe I can start my own sneaker line. Like when did that happen for you? I mean, it was completely organic. I was in the trenches of everything. And I was having a conversation with my brother who I, I work with. And I was just really venting to him and telling him I was tired of begging companies to see my worth and my value. And at this point, I had been to four Olympics. I couldn't find another footwear sponsor. And so he was like, we should do this ourselves. I felt that he was right. Like, we, here's an opportunity for us to create change instead of asking somebody else to do it. And when we went down that path, we learned what we thought we were doing was creating shoes for me to wear in the Olympics. But then we learned that sneakers have not been made for women and they're made off of a mold of a foot and it's the mold of a man's foot. And once we learned that, we're like, this has got to change. And so um, our shoes are completely made to fit the form of the female foot. And we just try to do things different. We're for and by women. And so I love that I get to wake up and, and do that every day. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. The name, though, Seish, what's, what's the story there? So Seish is a type of wave. We spell it phonetically. But the Seish wave is found in enclosed bodies of water. And when atmospheric pressure brings the water to one side, it's the Seish wave that restores balance. And so that's what we want to be. You know, we don't believe there's ever been balance in the marketplace, but that's what um, we strive to do. That just gave me chills. What has this experience in your journey this far, what has it taught you that you know for sure? Yeah, um, I think it's shown me my strength and just my power. Um, I think before I would have been terrified to speak up or to build something. And I think it's just shown me what I can actually do and that I can bring change into this world. And that keeps me motivated and going. And it's been an amazing journey and, and lessons learned. First of all, I just want to cheers you guys because you chose a life in wine country. Yeah. And thank, thank you. you. We're so grateful to have you here and to join our club. Thanks. Yes. Our start today event. And this is such a lovely crowd. And oh. just like oh. we've been having such great conversations and learning and just like it. chilling and getting away from the crazy world that we're in. So what made you say we're going to wine country? So it's actually, so we moved here 2020 and I feel like everyone during 2020 in the pandemic, it was a time where you just stood still and you really thought about life and where you're at and what makes you happy. And Nikki and I kind of were, we were living next door to each other in Arizona, but we were just like, is, is this our happy place? Like, is this where we want to live and raise our kids? And we're like, no, our happy place is in wine country. 
And so her and I, this is so crazy, but we're crazy. We go, if we go on Zillow and there's two houses next door to each other, that means the stars aligned and we're supposed to move. Sure enough, two houses, one being my style, one being her style, next wow. door to each other. So it just made sense. And we wanted to be more hands-on in the wine industry, which is what we've been doing the last couple of years. And we've had a wine for six years. So Bonita, bonita. Yes, yeah. bonita, bonita. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, I mean... It, and to take a, I mean, a few steps back, Brie and I, we used to film our reality shows in wine country a lot, and then we would always do our vacations here. And when we were working full-time with WWE, we rarely got vacations because we were on the road over 300 days a year, worldwide wrestling. So any chance we had a vacation, which usually would be like two and a half days, we always came to Napa Valley or Sonoma County. And we were just, we never wanted to leave. We were so happy. So that's when 2020 hit. And we were like, well, if we're stuck inside forever, <laughs> might as well go be by a vineyard. Right. And at the time, know? like, we didn't know. Everyone didn't no, know. Right. We're like, we're going to be stuck forever. No one's yeah. ever going to do this again. Yeah. Totally. You know, I remember thinking that. So you're like, I'll be stuck here. <clears throat> yeah. Right. And being pregnant on top of it. I mean, for us moms out there, when the hormones kick in and all the pregnancy stuff, we're like, we're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> So let's. So for people who aren't familiar, you're you have had quite a journey in your almost forty years, right? Yes. So just a month ago, it's about a month on the fourteenth, you announced that you are now the not the Bella Twins, the Garcia Twins. Right. And so, what prompted that shift? Wow. So it's interesting because we've been the Bella. Tw we were the Bella Twins for almost seventeen years. And it was about a year ago. How did that come about, first of all? So name. our grandfather, full-blooded Italian from South Philly, always calling us Bella, Bella. Oh, Bella and Bella. so, yeah, oh, we so got Philly some Italians in, in here, either <laughs> Philly or Italian. Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and so when um, he, so when it came to us thinking of a stage name for WWE, it only made sense Bella for him. So that's how we came up with Brie Bella, Nikki Bella. But it was about a year ago that Nikki and I, we were in a meeting, and we walked away from that meeting. We got in our car. Actually, we were back. We were over in New York. We were in Connecticut. We were making our way back into the city, and her and I looked at each other, and we are like, whoa, we're done. Like this, we, you we both need knew? to, we just both knew. Is that a twins thing, or was it like, we're done, like throwing, I mean. Well, and I think because you are very into, like, believe in energy and all that, it was like we felt, we both, without even speaking words, we could look at each other. We felt energy in the room, everything, and we just knew that the relationship was over. We knew it was time for us to expand. It was time for us to not ask permission anymore, especially when you hear no a lot. We're like, we, we're almost 40. I can't be asking for permission Praying it'd be yes, when usually it's a no. There was just so much, and her and I were just like, okay, we need to start thinking about our new chapter, which means thinking about our, our new name, I guess. And the, and the Bella was a WWE thing, yes. right? So if you left the WWE, you had to leave that name anyway, so, mm -hmm. right? right? Right, and we were, and we were prepared for that. Um, it's WWE's IP. So when Brie and I were in the process of knowing that we were gonna eventually be closing this chapter and starting another one, we knew that we would leave that name. So you said to yourselves, and we just said, you know, we also want to go back to our roots. We're Mexican-Italian. We're very proud of our Hispanic heritage. And we represented our Italian side for so long. So for us, it was something we really wanted to go back and represent Garcia and that side of us. And it's just the roots of women. You know, Brie and I, when you look at a book, and we have so many chapters, right? And when we are entering this next chapter, we have a life coach, and we... We do the work on every part of our lives, and we've been doing that probably for the past 20 years of just really working on ourselves, um, our careers, everything personally and professionally, and it was like, what does this next chapter mean? What does Garcia mean? Yes, it's our name, it's going back to roots, but what does it mean to us? And for Bree and I, it was just this chapter of truly having, we've always had a voice, but not being silenced, truly getting our power back not asking for permission, like Bree said, growing in any way we wanted to. So for us, we just wanted to be our authentic name, Garcia. And we just thought of everyone in the past that didn't have a voice and who we could represent now and how we could walk into this next chapter, just feeling us strong and powerful. Yeah, I think that deserves a clap. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking that. Um, but you talk in your book, and you're very open about it, your journey has not been without pain. Right. Um, but you, 
when did this change sort of the shift of saying we're not victims? I mean, as children, you had a really hard time and you talk about that. So if you could just sort of tell us about that and then when the shift came. Yeah, I mean, we, we grew up in a broken home and so, and there was, you know, there was abuse and there was a lot of um, times in our childhood where we just, you know, we didn't have a great relationship with our father and there was times he was absent due to drugs and I think that was one hurdle. And then another hurdle um, for myself, and I'll let you speak on yours, is I lost, lost my boyfriend to a drunk driver in high school and to have to deal with that pain at a young age and experience that. And Nikki, that's, a lo- that's a lot of stuff before 18. I mean, a lot, yes, for sure. And then Nikki dealt with um, rape and before 18 as well. So, you know, we went through a lot of pain, but I think as we had each other, we stayed really strong. But um, definitely, I feel like our hardships molded us into strong women. But you talk about like, something of that enormity now, so casually, it's like, Right. Don't you wish, and I know you guys, this is a big mantra for you as well, um, and I know you do this on your podcast, but, like, if you could only tell your younger self, like, look at me. Yeah. Like, look yes. at what's going to happen. Right. right. And that's why it's so important to talk about it, because I want, I don't want people to go back and look at the younger self and say, oh, I wish I could have just held her. She could have just went to her mom or just went to someone and talked to, you know, someone about it. I'd love for them to learn from me knowing that you can. And that's, I guess, what leads me to sort of your mantra now is, right, is that you're all about not asking permission. Right. So um, I love that because I posted a quote the other day that some of, somebody told me here they, that when they were saying that no is a complete sentence. 100%. Like, it, it doesn't have to be like, I'm blank. It's like going to pass or no or I don't want to do that. Yeah. And, and I know that that's a big mantra of both of you. Oh, for sure. I mean, well, and, you know, it's interesting because Nikki always said when we were in, you know, that more than just wrestling and business and everything, when we hear a no, we actually, now it's depending. If you're saying no to someone to tell them not to do something, yes, no is that. But also when we'd hear no, when it came to asking for permission, we were like, how are we going to turn that into yes? We're always about that. How are we going to turn a negative into a positive? And I feel like as women, it's been a big habit for us to ask for permission. We had to ask permission to vote. We had to ask permission to work hard, to have a job. And I feel like it was embedded from our great-grandmothers, our grandmothers, and even from our mothers. We're at the point in our lives where her and I are like, no, we're not. We're not going to ask for permission to do anything. And if we do some stuff that's like, okay, well, that wasn't good. Oh, wow, well, we're human. Right. You're like, we not make great. mistakes. You know, I love that you said that because I feel like we have to give the grace to ourselves. Yeah. Do you care what other people think? Like, if you no. read an article. I've opened up my mouth a lot this past year and, <laughs> you know, may have got me in trouble with some people, but I actually was the first time ever. To that. <laughs> I think I didn't care because I was speaking the truth. And, and I believed every word I said and every word that I said was honesty. Yeah. But it was the first time ever that it didn't bother me because I was just like, well, that's what I believe. Right. Yeah. I love so. that. Right. Because if you really believe it, right. then it's like, okay, you're wrong. Or you have another opinion and you do you, but that's not yes. what I think.
So thank you so much yes. for yeah. being a part of this. Thank you. And thank you all for us. having us. Yeah, thank you. And so I'd love to leave with just some sort of like takeaway that yeah. you think that we could take out of the weekend. Mm -hmm. So it was something I've been working on um, a lot lately is patience. And I saw this quote on Pinterest um, and it said, be patient with yourself. Nothing in nature takes quick to bloom. And I believe that. I feel like nowadays we're so quick to check on people on Instagram, Facebook, Google something. We get everything quick and done. And I think we get impatient now. And I feel like in my next chapter, I need to allow myself to be patient to see what's to come. Not expect it all now. And sometimes when it doesn't happen now, I kind of get antsy and I think everything's failing. Nothing's working out for me. But just like nature, the seasons, like we all get excited when the wildflowers bloom. They just bloomed last week. And it's like, I'm that wildflower. Allow myself to have a couple seasons of getting that rainfall, you know, getting the sunshine, and then I'm going to bloom. So that's for me right now. It's like a good vintage of wine, Brie. Right? You're right. Yes. Um, and for me, I'm someone who um, I have a lot of goals and I have a vision board. And it's like I like to hit certain things, whether it's yearly or just in my life, have my own milestones right. that I create. And sometimes I can have a tough time staying motivated or I can be extremely motiv motivated. But one of the quotes that I love is, we cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. And I feel sometimes it's hard to let go of who we were, but who we're meant to be is there. And sometimes, like I've been on this incredible journey and I've had ups and downs through my life. And I feel like I've been a lot of different versions of me. And that's okay. That's like the story we tell. We get to be these different characters. And who I was then, I'm not now. And I know who I'm going to be in this next chapter is who I was in the past 16 years. And I can't wait to meet her and then look back on myself now and like have that conversation of like, Remember when you were 39, entering 40? Um, so yeah, it's, you know, where we wanna go, we just know that what are we doing today? What are we doing in the next 10 minutes to be that person? I mean, I learned so much from you. Oh, and thank you. you're just lovely. And thank you for being so vulnerable and for sharing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, it's a lot. And I think it helps empower us because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting right. a different result. So yeah. if we don't change our behavior, and I like like just the ability to forgive and like move on from who you were. You don't have right. to right. live that. No. You could like be like, that was not the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on.com. Totally. 100%. Thank you so much for joining us for the new rules and Sonoma County. Savannah, you got to catch up with one of probably your most favorite people, Miss mm. Kristen Chenoweth. Oh, she's a legend. You yeah. know, she was just down the street. She met us at historic St. Patrick's Cathedral. Honestly, we could have talked for hours. Kristen, of course, needs no introduction. She's a Tony and Emmy winner and has transformed Broadway with her starring roles in Wicked and You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Well, she credits God and her faith with helping her get to the main stage. And as a Christian, she believes it's her mission to share God's love. And whether that is on the Broadway stage or walking down the streets of New York, she's finding a different kind of voice. I can't believe we're here. Can you believe we're here? You got your start singing in church. I did. Not a church like this one, though. Oh, no, no. Uh, mine was in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and it only had about 1,000 people in, in membership. But God was a huge part of my life how I found my gift was through church music. What does it feel like to sing a great hymn, like How Great Thou Art, and be able to sing it like you? I feel, <laughs> thank you so much, you make me cry. It's, it gets me back to my roots. Whenever I sing, you mentioned great is thy faithfulness earlier, and I, great is, great is thy faithfulness, I just, the morning echo. Morning by morning, morning new, new mercies, mercies I see. Take my mic down. <laughs> Never. You have a song in your heart, and you should sing it. Maybe not as loud as me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not as loud as you. I'll lip sync. Would you say you first found your voice in yeah. church? I was in the choir, little kids' choir, and my, they were having an audition for an adult solo. And my mom said, you can't, you're a kid. I said, let me just go try out. You know, that says a lot about me at that age. So I went and I got the solo. They were like, we're gonna give it to you. And then 
that Sunday I sing the solo and the church erupts. And I say this story only to tell you that when you're a little kid and the encouragement you get from people that love mm. you to follow the passion that you love, I was given an opportunity to sing about something that I believe in, which is faith, mm. and do it in front of people who love me, a very safe space. It started the ball rolling. And I love to sing for all kinds of faiths because I believe that we, we worship a God that is loving, not one that is man has made so you're going to hell mm. and a loving God. And if I can spread that joy, then I'm gonna try because that was one of the things God told me when I was a little girl. People go, oh, he actually, he spoke, hey, Chris, you know? Yeah. I get these impressions on my heart. I don't know how else to explain it. It's a still small voice. And when I get that impression, it's like a handprint, like, yes, that's correct. It's interesting about God's voice because um, it's hard to describe, although actually I think you describe it really well. Thank you. But I often find it is saying something that is unexpected. Yes, yes. I remember Savannah even talking about my adoption. And I've just started talking about it recently because, because I got the impression in my heart, this will help other people. People need to know that you just weren't in, in this world magically. They need to know what was behind it. It will inspire people. And so it's become a lot more easier for me to talk about. But if I couldn't listen, I would have kept that secret. And I'm not ashamed of it. Kristen was adopted as a newborn. Her adoptive mother happened to be in the hospital the same day she was born for an operation that would leave her unable to conceive. By chance or heavenly plan, Kristen unexpectedly became available for adoption. She said to the doctor, I always wanted to try for a little girl and now I won't be able to. And he remembered that story. So when my birth mom, Mama Loon, came to give birth, she they called my dad before and said, do you want to surprise Junie tomorrow? Because I've got a little baby here that's going to need a home. And my dad said, yeah. And so they kind of took my mom, robed her up and day of her surgery and took her down to the babies. And they said, see that baby? That's your baby. So she's waiting on you when you get done. And so we went home together. And she said, I always felt like I had you because we went home together. And I mean, how can I, me personally, not believe in miracles? Mm. I got the perfect family. I was brought into this world by the wonderful mother, Mama Lynn. And I was able to get an education. I grew up in a loving, giving family, one full of faith and a lot of fun too. And, you know, it's a gift. It's a gift. So that's a miracle. But how does Mama Lynn, did she sing? Yes. Okay. And the, my birth father was a great musician as well, mm. Billy Etheridge. And some people might know who he is out there, but so I know where it came from. Mm. And she's petite. I got her height. People say nature versus nur mm. nurture. I think no, nature and nurture mm. is what it is. It's such a beautiful alchemy, this story. You know, it's <laughs> like this magic. It's divine. It's divine. It's divine. You've had ups and downs in your career. You've talked about how you've looked for God's voice yeah. to guide you. Yeah. How has that helped you make decisions that might have been a little surprising at the time, or a little yeah. unorthodox or off the beaten path? It's been really interesting because I have a, a wonderful team that works for me to help me guide with these decisions. Even when I was younger, I was lucky enough to get a great agent. I went to New York with my friend Denny to help him audition and get settled in. And I thought, maybe I'll just try out for something for fun, have the experience. And I ended up getting this part. And I had a big decision to make. And this is where I talk about the gut. This is where I talk about that impression. Some people call it the universe, that's fine. For me, it's the Lord. But I have to get quiet. My whole life I've heard from my aunts and my mom, two ears, one mouth, Kristen. Two ears, one mouth. <laughs> Speak less and listen more, because you know I can talk. <laughs> And when I do that, I'm able to kind of hear what God wants for me. And I went to New York. I said, I want to do this thing and it worked out. So God has other plans sometimes. And it's happened several times in my career. But faith is a journey and not always an easy one. 
Along with great success, Kristen has had great setbacks, including an onset accident that nearly killed her a decade ago. Severely injured, the road back was a crucible. It was horrific and scary and awful. Now, I could go in the path of bitterness and anger, and I did for a while, I did. But I could let all that go. It happened. So guess what I'm gonna choose? That way. And a lot of it is up to us. He gave us a mind, and for me to just, I don't guess I'm preaching, but for me to talk about that, that'll be something I really want people to know. Have you ever had doubt, seasons of doubt, or disconnection with God? Yes. The big question of why God me? Yeah. Why me, God? I've had several injuries. You know, I'm in a, I'd like to say I'm an athlete. All my Broadway people know what I mean. People that tour, they know what I mean. I asked my mom one day, this was after this accident. I had to kind of relearn how to get some of my sentences out, land the plane, so to speak. I, my physical, physical body is not the same as it was. And I had a big pity party. And they, were, they stayed with me for three months to help me walk and things. She said, why not you? I said, what do you mean? Like, I'm crying. She goes, of course, do I want this for my daughter? No, but why not you? You know better or worse than anybody else. Things happen to everybody. You're on a mission to spread the love of God. I mean, that's it. Wait, that's you know, but also when you do fall and you mess up and we all have, you get this amazing gift, which is God's grace. It's an incredibly bonding experience with God. When you know you did something wrong and you feel that on your heart, you are forgiven. I mean, you're so right to bring that up, grace. Growing up, my mom always said, Junie Chenoweth, I love you. She said, uh, if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's hard. It's hard. And it's later in life because I'm a Leo and I'm very loyal and I expect it back by people that love me. And when I've been hurt in the past, I have held on to it and it has hurt me. So just recently, this is a, a fact. I've started forgiving people that I feel have hurt me that don't even care anymore or know about it because I'm the one that's hurting. And that's God's grace. He says, see, my child, if you'd done this the whole time, you wouldn't have carried that, that on your journey. I think that's so unique to God's character, if you will. When he tells us something, even something we don't really want to do, like forgive someone who hurt you. Yeah. He's not doing it for them. He's doing it for you. Yeah, it's true. And I've had tro more trouble, Savannah, learning to forgive myself mm. when I have disappointed others, disappointed myself. Mm. I'm very hard on myself. Type A, your average nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? Learning to forgive yourself is the most important so that you can move forward.
At my church, the pastor says, one way to define sin is just the way we fall short of love. Oh my gosh, say that again. Sin is just the way that we fall short of love. And I think that's a more accurate way to describe it yes. and more matches up with what, you know, what God intends. I agree. I so agree. I love that. I'm going to remember that in my head because it is all about love, isn't it? Yeah. We don't have these conversations all that much. Not anymore. And there's a way to talk about it, I think, in love and openness without judgment or some kind of, I don't know. Cutting think, off? Yeah. Closing down the wall? And you know what it comes down to? We're all God's children. I know. Everybody gets in on it. It's, it's, I think if we thought about that more, yeah. it would be transforming. Then we really would be look at each other as brother and sister instead yes. of the enemy. In this family together. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what God wants us to do. Don't you, Savannah? On this road. So on this day, Kristen Chenoweth, who God gave the voice of an angel, raised hers loud and strong, and we were blessed. You know what? I would love for you to join me. Aww. You should. Four months ago to the day, Janet Jackson invited this girl from Wichita, Kansas to be her backup dancer on tour. Well, you didn't have to ask me twice. I am hours away from hitting that stage and living my best life. That's right, I am on center stage at the Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida. Hey, baby, it's Janet for Janet's opening weekend of her Together Again tour, her first major tour in four years. When fans from all over the country and different cities come to see the show, what do you want them to feel? Joy, just complete bliss, excitement. I want them to reminisce about great times in their lives when this song comes on, that song comes on, just happiness. And not to be corny, but it's been such a long time since I've been with the fans, so this is, this is for them. On that note, how do you feel, especially with a tour like this? Is it exciting? Is it challenging? Is it exhilarating? Maybe all of it? It's all of that. It really is, especially getting the show together. I love production rehearsals. When the stage is up and we get to do the wardrobe changes and really, really dig into it, and I didn't get as many days as I would have loved to have, so we did like one full dress rehearsal literally the day before the, the day before the show and they worked out fine and then they went to finish for the for last night's show i was just about to ask you janet what is it about being on stage and performing that you love i enjoy it i enjoy 
dancing. I enjoy performing for the fans. I enjoy just sharing what I've created. I love putting a show together, creating it with Gil, Gil Duel de Lau, and it just gives me so much joy and to say, look, look at what we've created, and I hope that mm. they enjoy it, knowing that I like it and I love performing it. hope they enjoy it, watching it. You have so many, you know, songs that fans love, but is there any song in particular that, I guess, when you look out into the crowd and they're singing it back to you, that you feel most connected to them? Oh my gosh, there's a, it's a couple of times in the show that it happened. But I think one of, one of the nicest moments for me is uh, when, I, when I, I do again and um, when they sing it to me. Mm. And I, I love that. I can hear them. And, and that sounds so beautiful to me. Them knowing that melody, thinking, oh my God, how many years ago was it mm. that, that I, I, I wrote that song? And, and just listening to them. And, a melody that you've come up with and lyrics that you've come up with that you've created and and having this group of people just singing it back to you, you know, I, 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 I love that it, it's just it's beautiful is there anything that you do uh, before you hit the stage you know when you perform or a ritual or is there anything that you say to yourself or? always pray we as a group we always pray and I myself I always give it up to God mm. I say God from this 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 point on I said it's I'm releasing it to you it's it's in your hands and and that's who I trust the most by the way I should mention we're uh, you're letting cameras kind of follow you around for an upcoming documentary you're still developing this but we know it involves family this yes. tour family the tour there are some surprises I think it'll be uh, quite fun I, I hope that the audience enjoys it. And I'm, I'm so thankful that it was as, as successful as it was. You know, you're just moseying along for five years and talking about your life and friends and family and work and this and that. And, and it, was, it, was, it was difficult at times. At times it was a breeze. Um, very uh, cathartic, therapeutic. <laughs> Uh, it's like you were in a session at times, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I enjoyed it. The press release that they sent out with this new one, it has a picture of the family on the front. It talks about the family, you know, back together for a reunion. Do you think there would be a time when you guys would perform together or I get on a so. stage? I hope so. Why do you think now is the time uh, in the season that you're in in your life now to share a little bit more of you or to share some of those things? You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm I'm not as shy as I used to be, so I'm a little bit more open and just sharing more in my life than I ever did before and having a, my own family now and allowing to people to see and understand how we came up and what really was, what really happened and how it came about and maybe to help others who want to follow along in that path. That's the key. I mean, even though it's a different time now, but still you can take and learn and this and that and apply what might work today with what happened then. I love that. Do you think yeah. people, or do you feel like your fans really know you? Or is there still room for us to get to know you? I think there's still room, a little bit of room, but they know me sometimes better than I know myself. <laughs> so we're also celebrating 50 years of your career in mm -hmm. entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when you were on the Today Show, I told you, um, I talked about the power of representation and the impact you had on, you know, especially brown girls like me growing up in Kansas. And I was thinking about it. I mean, from acting, you know, we saw Penny, you know, on, on Good Times, different strokes. And the new then, kind of family yes, that I did with yes. Eileen Brennan and Rob Lowe and yes. Telma Hopkins. And then even on, obviously on the singing side, you were cranking out hit after hit after hit. At the time, did you have any idea the impact you were having? No, I was just doing what I loved and, and just thankful to God that I was able to do it. No, not thinking of that at all. I was just going and being excited about, okay, what 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 I'm going to do next, what, what what excites me to do next, what influences me, what, what moves me to do next. I wasn't really thinking about that. You can be called many things, a singer, Grammy winner, actor, producer, fashion icon, philanthropist, mom. Is there any title that you 
hold at the top of the list or do they all have a place in there? I think they all have a place, but the one that gives me the biggest gratification is mama. Well, that goes it. without saying. I said, mama. Janet's son, Issa, just turned six in January. What is it about being a mom that just completes you? Everything, every, every, when you're tired, when you need a break, I just love it all. I love it all. When, when you're in that moment, you see something special happens. It's like, oh my God. And I know I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking of one thing in particular. And I'll never forget it. And it was just so beautiful. And I just thought, that's my baby. That's, that's, you're making me emotional. Because I get it. I have three little ones. It puts everything in perspective. That's the highest for me, being a mama. Okay, that? so finally, let's talk about tonight. But me being here all started with good old fashioned <laughs> Today Show Halloween. Can I tell you what I was thinking, Janet? Tell me. Okay, the whole time I was like, I mean, I don't think Janet Jackson would actually be watching the Today Show, but if she is watching the Today Show, I just don't want her to be like, ooh, would that girl please sit down? <laughs> no, you know I saw this. No way. Yeah, I saw this, and I loved it. I saw this, and I absolutely loved it. I thought you did a wonderful Thank job. You. Okay, so Miss Jackson thinks I did a good job, but I had a month to rehearse that. I now had to learn a new routine in just hours. To help me loosen up, Janet took me to look at her tour wardrobe. These are the costumes for the show. Wow. Um, is it heavy? No, this is light. Valentino did this for Ooh. me. This is light. This is my opening cat suit. They did this cape. Pia Paolo did. This is heavy. It makes me feel very, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. And he also did, how gorgeous is this? Mm -hmm. I would wear this. Can I wear this? Yeah, once I finish with <laughs> okay, it, sure. There you go. <laughs> I need it until Seriously, then. like the shoulder, like the cut of it. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful with this, this skirt. Ooh. Look at that. And then the inside. It's so, it's beautiful. And it's, it's, it's got weight That's to it. I was it. about to say, it feels kind yeah. of heavy. And then Christian did this. Christian Soriano did this for me. Ooh. This the more, a little lighter part of the show. Love. And it's, uh, he did it so quickly, and it fits so nicely. It just hugs your body and easy to dance into. And Ooh. Chris John, he's been a friend of mine for a good while, mm, mm. Chris John Louboutin. And yes. he, he, I just called him up, and I said, Mama needs some new shoes. I mean, if Mama <laughs> needs new shoes, these aren't bad. <laughs> Do you ever want to keep some things? Like some of these, I would want to keep, like this or the boots. It's, it's or, beautiful. Or do you well, let I, it go? Well, when I did the auction, I let everything go, but there was one thing I, I didn't let, let go. What was that? And that was my uh, uh, original, original. I had two original Rhythm Nation costumes. Mm. And one of them that I wore, I let go. And the other original, I kept from my baby. That's worth it. Oh, my baby. that's sweet. And if, if he wants to throw it out, He's then he throw can. It out.
Once Janet had calmed my nerves from an 11 to about a 10 and a half, it was time for her to take me to meet my fellow dancers. This is our path that you see all this glow tape in there. Is it crew guys. a little lighter than this at, when you're doing no, this? No, it's darker than this. Oh All you see are silhouettes. Ooh. So I'm going to sit out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, as All you right. say, release you uh, into yeah, the wild. Into <laughs> <laughs> Give it up to God the way I do every okay, night. It's okay. in his hands. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jim. I'm, I'm a step out. Okay. All, All right. right. Have fun. All right. But right now, fun yeah, was feeling more one. like fear. Yeah, but good. I had to put those nerves aside. Five, six, seven, eight. Lost it a bit. Hey. Just and then I found out Janet wanted me to come out hey. during Together Again, the encore song. Crazy! This was huge. She trusted me. I had to nail it. I'll just anything. go upstairs and practice that little thing. I spent the next two hours practicing in my room until it was showtime. And suddenly, my nerves melted away, and I just embraced the magic of the moment. And the next thing I knew, I was dancing with Janet Jackson. Go on, Sam. All my love's for you, always been the true and it's up me. But just like her music, Janet just wanted me to smile to the very end. I've read about it, but you know, to actually see this, I knew you were a hoarder collector. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, man. So when people come in from here, the first thing they see is the posters. So we got Oakley here, Walt Black Green, Black Jesus Earl. <laughs> These are my guys. So here you're at Spike Lee Creative Source. Bro the Brooklyn Museum. Mm -hmm. You are a who would have thunk it? I was going to say who would have thunk it. You are a son of Brooklyn, and you have a major exhibit in the Brooklyn Museum. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? It feels great. And uh, here's a story. When people come to my office in Fork in Brooklyn, they say, "This looks like a museum." You should, have, you should let people in your office see it. Say, "Uh, uh." <laughs> so my office is private. So this is a chance for people to see, the public to see, the people, especially from the Republic of Brooklyn, New York, to see all the stuff I've had, I have on my walls, in my homes, in my office, and in storage. And all this stuff is part of people who I've looked up to, not just the sports, just these, the people here are my pantheon. Mm -hmm. And by the way, your mom would bring you here. Yes. Growing up. My mother 
was, I mean, not just me, my siblings too. Yeah, so sure. my mother, my late mother, wanted her children to be well, well-rounded. And she did a great job. Not just me, all my siblings, you mm-hmm. know, are, are well-educated and, and, and immersed in the arts. So how do you, when you've got a, a 1,000 piece plus <laughs> collection spread out, how do you bring that down to 470 so or so pieces? How do you, how do you make the choice? Well, I'm gonna be honest. It was a little push and shove to get into that number. <laughs> all of, all of. <laughs> but I want it to look like my office. I not want to look like a oh, museum where there's a, something here and something here. And it's divided up into sections, but I just wanted to get the, I don't want to be stingy. Mm-hmm. I, wanted, I want the world to see the stuff. Why? Because it needs to be seen. Also, it might give people like a little insight to you know where my influences are from. You know who my heroes or heroines, the the pantheon. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people here are gonna do their research. You know, got their phone. Like, who is this person? Who is this? It's education. It's it's educational. And what's interesting about this is that there are movie posters. There's sports memorabilia, but there's there's kind of politics, a bo- politics, art, art. and it's all, all my. I was going to say this. These are all the parts of Spike Lee. Yes, and, and you know, one day they'll go back and trace, look in this exhibition where where this fit in with my, you know, body of work, mm-hmm. narrative and documentaries. I've been to your house and I've seen all a lot of this on the wall, but. I had no idea the depth of the. I mean, this is less than half of what you've got. When did this start? Starting when I was a kid in Brooklyn. My friends and I, we would go to Rosa Hotel because that's where the National League teams would stay. So Willie Mays, when the, when the Giants in New York, the Shea Stadium, we're at the hotel waiting for Willie to come out. <laughs> we, got, we got the baseball cards. We got those three by five index cards too. Mm-hmm. When the Braves come out, wait, Hank Aaron, where's Hank Aaron? The Pirates, where's Clemente? Where's the Clemente? And also, besides the sports, I collected Marvel comic books. I, I, I like DC. I was more of a DC. I, I you, you like Daredevil? I did like Daredevil. So where did, where did this love of film come from? When, how did that start? Well, the plants, the plants was, were planted early. My father hated Hollywood films. Hated them. So I'm the eldest, so I was my mother's movie date. That's how it happened. Now, plants don't grow and bloom right away. So we had to plant the seeds. Sure. So it was to a college that those seeds came out. But going in the movies, I, I didn't even know. About I just went to the movies. That's yeah. it. I didn't think about who's directing, who's writing it. You know, you look at the, the, the people on the screen, but not behind the screen. So. It was when I was in college, went to Morehouse College that, uh, that I had to choose a major, and that major was mass communications. Film, print journalism, radio, photography. And Morehouse, Morehouse didn't have that major. I threw that major across the street at Clark College. So that's, that's where it started. As you started to think about this, you know, maybe becoming a director, becoming, moving into film, and your dad was, was a jazz musician. Yeah. Did that impact your directing? You know, the... It didn't impact my directing, but I knew I had a great, I just grew up having a great appreciation for jazz. Mm-hmm. So it's been reflected in, you know, almost all the films I've done, even the films I did without my father doing the score. When you do these films, and in the beginning, you were in some of your movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only reason I was in She's Gonna Have because the first film, because we didn't have any money to pay anybody else. But behind us, you see some game worn Jordans. Mm-hmm. And because of the character I played, Marge Blackman, that's how me and Mike got hooked up with the uh, commercials that changed the whole game. Michael, Mars, and MJ. So it's funny how things work. 
Did you ever think that maybe acting again? No. <laughs> I do them. I knew the commercials with 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 with, with, with Sam Barkley and Magic, but I knew Mars. I wasn't have to act. Mm -hmm. So Nike's agency, they saw she's gonna have it. So it was their vision to pair my character Mars from She's Gonna Happy with the GOAT, Michael Jordan, and, and it changed everything. You know, Nike went to the stratosphere. Yeah. In fact, before really doing the right thing, people only knew me, didn't know who I was, just that crazy guy in the commercial mm -hmm. of Michael Jordan. Where are we going? What's the future of filmmaking? You know, when you kind of start looking at AI and all this stuff, where, where are we going? AI, that's the thing that scares me. Does it? I mean, just these stories and novels and movies, it's not science fiction today. Yeah. That stuff is here. And as far as the arts go, I just think that it's very dangerous where a soulless, non-human being is thrust into the art world. There's a lot of stuff about copyright, you know, and ownership. I'll just say a straight up theft. Posters, the movie posters. Now, of course, they're the you know your movies in there, but not all of them. But not all. That's what I was going to say. I think people would be surprised to see how many other movie posters there are. Are those movies that? There's nothing in this ex exhibition that does not mean something to me. But I've been very, I've been lucky. Let me tell you a story. So my films are showed worldwide. So when it comes out, I gotta get on a plane. So. I was in Rome, I forgot what film it was. And my publicist, I, I asked my publicist, do you know Fellini? Yeah, I know him. I said, can you call him up, see you at dinner with me? Tonight, come to this restaurant. So for like four years in a row, every time I went to Rome, I was having dinner with Fellini. And every time I went, not the first, the, the other three times, I had posts in the sign. <laughs> so you see the post is signing me from Fellini. La Dota Vita, eight and a half, La Strada, signing me from Federico Fellini. When you're sitting across from Frederick, from Fellini, <laughs> what, what are you, what? He was just, he, he's, I mean, he's funny. He had me dying. And we had like that red wine, Italian. <laughs> We're in Rome, drinking wine, and I'm sitting across the table with Fellini. I'm like, bam! <laughs> Scorsese? Because, because when you, and you're in film school, because I, look, I, the, these world cinema, I was introduced to until I was in graduate film school, NYU. But when you see these, these great films and you're able to know them, and they're signing stuff to you too, it looks like, and they see my films too. You know, it's not, I'm some, I'll give you a line from Scorsese. It's not like I'm some Mama Luke of the Year. 
Oh, Mama Luke. No Mama Luke's over here. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm looking at, I mean, Kahende Wiley. Yes. This, is, I mean, this, this piece is spectacular. Yeah. If you had to pick, what's your favorite? Is there, is there a favorite piece of, or grouping? Well, there is, uh, it's not, I'm not going to pick one, but. Grouping. The net, one of the nets from Game 7, May 8th, 1970, versus Los Angeles Lakers. The Willis Reed or, and Walt Frazier game. I got the net from that game. I was there, too. 13 years old. Wow. What a sports, what, because there, it's, it's a huge representation here. What does sports, especially New York sports, mm -hmm. mean to you? Well, my father, besides being a great musician, composer, he loved sports. He always, he always would tell us, me and my siblings, how great an athlete he was. So my father was a Dodger fan, like all other black people back then. But that, my love, my, mom, my father was taking me to the garden. The old garden, 8th Avenue. Yeah. So that's where my love for Knicks came from. He was taking me to Knicks games. And like, me and my father were not sitting courtside. <laughs> we were in the last row. But you were there. I was there. So I just think about it. I was sitting in the last row at the garden, the courtside. Yeah. And I got this thing from the garden. This will be my 33rd or... 32nd and 33rd years of season ticket holders. When you first walked this, once it, everything was hung, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts on it? I was thinking about my parents, because mm -hmm. my father just died, you know, in uh, May. My mother died while I was a sophomore in college. So, they're a great part of who I am is because who they were. And they were art. My love of sports comes from my father, music. My mother was a cinephile. So I'm really a product of uh, not just my parents, but the legacy of, mm -hmm. of my ancestors, you know. So, and then a lot of my, my siblings work is here too, you know. So there is my, my brother David's photographer. So many of his photos are here too. What would they think of it? They'd be proud. Yeah. Because it's about legacy, just keeping it going, you know. You just got to, everybody, you know, every generation, let's keep it going. Go high and high. And I expect the same from South from Jackson. I know you expect the same thing for your children, too. You know, we just want to go, go beyond what we've done. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it going. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about this, too, is, you know, it's in different sections. It's, they're very personal stuff. Yeah, the family section is very personal. My father did a score for all my films in NYU you graduate film school. Then she's going to have it. School days, do the right thing, more better blues. So that's, I just, we, I, my siblings, it's not just me. Yes. My siblings and I, we grew up in a musical household. And there is a musicality to your work. Uh, my father's side of family is uh, all his siblings, parents, grandparents, just a musical background. But what's funny is we were growing up, my father would come in the house and he would hear Motown and the Beatles, turn that bad music off. He was a jazz purist. I mean, we had, we had like, we wouldn't we would turn up, we were like, turn it down and put our ears <laughs> right to the, the little transistor radio. So how did that household mm -hmm. kind of influence who you, you've become? Just grew up, I mean, the best example, if anybody's seen Crooklyn, that's, that's the Lee family growing up in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. So my father at one time was a go-to bassist. And so my mother had to work, so she got a job at St. Anne's in Brooklyn Heights. And she supported all, I'm, I'm the first of five. So she would work all day, come home, cook, grade papers. But she had a great belief in my, in my father's music, so she supported him. This is my father, Bill Lee. And uh, this is a letter from the vice president giving her condolences on my father's uh, passing. And this is my mother. It's funny. This thing here 
Somebody threw it out. It was, a, it was a, right next to my office in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Just threw out this thing. I said, what? I could use this. So I knew I had this picture of my mother. So I just had this photograph put uh, with this. And this is my mother's mother, Mama. Oh. She lived to be 100. Wow. And she put me through Morehouse NYU graduate film school. For 50 years, she taught art and saved the social security checks 50 years for grandchildren's education. So I'm the oldest, I had first dibs. <laughs> and, that, and that's me. Wait, you were a cutie, look at you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Dear Ma, that's she called. Mm -hmm. Dear Ma and Father Lee, your grandson is here. He weighed the last night at six pounds and eight ounces at 7.51 p.m. The lead characteristics are definitely there. He looks <laughs> nothing like anyone on my side of the family. He has those big, long hands, music, musicians, of course, like Bill's, with my father. Father is coloring or black spiky hair. Wait, is that where Spike came from? No. <laughs> <laughs> His spike was a tough baby, but. And wait, he's a homely little rascal <laughs> right now. I love the pieces. <laughs>
is they know, but now it's like staring them in the in in the face. And that 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 opening night gala, this thing was packed, and so they really saw like uh, and a lot of people there, or from my film family. So it was like a reunion. But they they know, and they also know that they got to the the torch is gonna be handed to them. Keep this thing going. They know. That's they, a lot of pressure. They're built for it. They're built for it. What's your legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? The legacy is really the Satchel Jackson, because I'm not having no more kids. <laughs> and uh, just got to keep it going. And they're both artistic, you know, doing their thing. Uh, Jackson works from now 40 acres. Satchel's a grad school in Chicago for photography. She's a great photographer. And uh, just keep it going. Mm -hmm. Just keep it going. And just, we're lucky because if you, if you can make a living doing what you love, you're blessed. Because yeah. I don't think it's an overstatement to say the majority of people on this God's earth go to their grave having slaved the job they hated. So... You know, we're blessed. There's going to be some small kid who comes in here. How small? <laughs> well, big enough so that they don't touch anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> but some kid's going to come in here. He's going to see this. She, he or she's going to see this. Mm -hmm. What do you want them to take from this? Well, I hope the parents can explain in terms their children, their young children, who understand, you know, just give them a little bit of history, not not to get, you know, that just plant little seeds, maybe. That's the thing. That maybe there's something here that they might want to, will it be photography, sports, politics. Politics, you know, one of my favorites is Shirley Chisholm. First black from Brooklyn, yep. ran for president of the United States. I remember. What do you want people to know about Brooklyn? You could say that same question of what I want people to know about my films. I've always been in the mind state like, people are gonna get what they want from your film, so I, I've always let something happen, you know, some controversy. Try to explain the film. I just, you know, I respect the audience's opinion, what they see, what they don't see, so I let them like, if that's what you got from that, cool. And I would say the same thing to this, that depending on who you are, you're going to get you know, different responses to what are on these walls here. We're all different. Who you are is going to be reflected in what you like and dislike, mm -hmm. what you respond to. Would it be safe to say that if Spike Lee hadn't grown up in Brooklyn, we would have a much different Spike Lee? Yes, I, I like that. 
full confession, I was not born in. Right. But I was born in. I'm a Grady baby. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Moved to Brooklyn. But I would not be the person who I am if I had not grew up here in Brooklyn. What are you most proud of, Spud? I'll go back. Oh, I get Tanya. I mean, her document just went, got nominated for an Emmy. Aftershock, she's doing her thing. Uh, doing her creative thing. Producing documentaries, writing, and, and, and just the whole, the Lee family, my children. So that's, that's really, you know, the foundation, you know, your family. Yeah. You know, that's what matters most. And as you look back, any regrets? Anything you... Oh, I mean, there are a lot of regrets. <laughs> but the funny one is, is that, you know, in the summertime, I'm in Marlins Vineyard and Oaks Bluff and the main street of Circuit Avenue. One day this guy saw me, he said, come here, Spike, I want to show you something. So, just, so I woke him, he opens, opens the trunk of his car and these ugly looking things. I said, what is that? He said, they're Crocs. I want you to invest, there's a little bit of money, but I'm, 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 uh, I'm trying to get this thing, you know. I said, what are those? Are we call them Crocs. I said, I'm sorry, sir. I mean, I can't do that. <laughs> Big regret. He wanted me to invest. He wasn't asking for a lot of money either. Yeah. Uh, they you, just look kind of funny to me, so I, I passed it up. But you did okay. Who do you think people think Spike Lee is? Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, and, uh, that's, that's the answer. That's the answer right there. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs> Ladies, ladies in blue. We all came separate and we all dressed the same. So I don't know what that means, but... Good uh, minds, Nicolai. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you know that I talk a lot about health. And I was saying to um, my friends that, of course, health at your age, at your age and at my age is very different. What are the issues that your age group is talking about? Well, I'm 33, so majority of my friends in my age group are thinking about having kids, having kids, or on their second or third child. I feel like the thing that we talk the most about in our friend group and also on BDA Baby is just overall burnout. Um, and that's burnout with your kids at home, it's burnout in relationships, and burnout with trying to make everything perfect, your friendships perfect, your work life perfect. It's just like an overall sense of burnout and a need for support in that. So when you go to the, your doctor, for a checkup or when you're talking to your doctor about burnout? Are you talking to her about sex? Are you talking to her about pregnancies? I feel like it's definitely hormones, pregnancy right now at this phase of my life. There's a lot of questions now when I go in about mental health specific questions. How are you feeling at home? How are you feeling in pregnancies? How are you feeling postpartum? There's a lot more awareness and conversation about that with doctors, I feel like, and also in my friend group then I feel like you reflect on 
having that kind of conversation when you were our age. When I talk to you, you're talking about a kind of a whole different group of women who haven't had children, who are uh, talking about, should I freeze my eggs? Uh, how do I not get pregnant? Or should I be getting pregnant? Or should I be freezing my eggs? You're talking about PCOS. You're talking about endometriosis. You're talking about different things than I hear your age group are talking. So what is your group? talking about young women that you talk to what do they talk about when they talk about women's health yeah well it's interesting so i know you're saying well i'm 33 and given my age and i'm thinking to myself i'm 32 <laughs> and given my age we're so far apart yeah <laughs> but my friends and our conversations like could not be more different yeah um a lot of my friends are working and trying to kind of figure out big life choices as to whether they want to freeze their eggs or a lot of them are you know not married yet so they're kind of struggling with questions about whether they're with the partner they want to marry and if they're making the right choices there. struggling with financial issues i have one girlfriend or two girlfriends now that are married and the rest of them are really just trying to grapple with how to be in the healthiest relationship they can be in, how do they feel their best, whether it's mentally, emotionally, or physically, and kind of what that, you know, lifestyle and world looks like for them. It just feels like a couple years ago that most of our conversations were about birth control, right? You know, yeah. what's the right form of birth control? Should you be on the pill? Should you be on an IUD? What's new out there? Then all of a sudden it jumped to, sh my gynecologist is telling me to freeze yeah, my eggs, yeah. like overnight. <laughs> but it seems to jump really quickly from like your early 20s. Like That happened less, to me, because like, I went in after you had a baby and I went to my gynecologist and I was like, do I need to be freezing my eggs? Like how much time do I have? <laughs> And she, I think I was 27 or just turned 28, and she was like, you have so much time, don't worry about it. I go in for 30, and she's like, so let's talk now about freezing your eggs. And I was like, hold on a second. I thought I had some time here. And every year it gets more like, I think we really should freeze your eggs. It's like an insurance policy. The pressure is on, meet with this person, which I, to me, I was definitely unprepared for. Do you feel overwhelmed by all of these topics about health? You're talking about birth control, freezing eggs, infertility, endometriosis, PCOS, pregnancy loss yeah. is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's overwhelming. I think that it's beautiful to be able to have the level of openness that I feel like our generation has with friends, but being able to have the support that and the openness that you have with friends is, I think, great. How big is sexual health in your generation? Like when I was your age, I never went, well, first of all, I had a male OBGYN. I know that's shocking to I both. Do. I don't even imagine. <laughs> I just don't, it, to me, it's also like you want somebody who's able to relate to well, there how weren't, you're feeling. I, I agree, of but I know were. that you were like, of I can't course. believe you. I was like, well, there were no women, you know, OBGYNs at the time. You know, I remember well after having four kids, I talked to my OBGYN and he said, you know, how's your sex life? And I was like, oh my God, I don't want to talk to you about yeah. that, you know? <laughs> but you guys speak pretty openly about all of that, right? I mean, we speak openly about it, but also, you know, we've spoken to you about those things yeah. and that's definitely generational differences sure. because you would never have talked to your mom about never. that. Never. So. Well, I think there's also luckily, like Catherine was saying, that there's so much more information today than there ever was. So there's just, there's a lot more awareness, I think now, and I think Luckily, actually, from people in your generation were raising the alarm about, I'm having these health consequences right now. Could it be from the food I'm eating? Could it be from the products I've been using since I was a teenager? Mm -hmm. And I think that luckily people have been responding with putting in a lot of money into research about these things. You, Christina, have done these films, one dealing with Adderall, one dealing with Xanax. How big are those issues in your age group? Yeah, I mean, the movies also sprouted out from my personal experience uh, mm -hmm. with medications. I knew I wasn't the only person going through those experiences. I think that the mental health landscape has evolved so much just even within the past few years, and the mm -hmm. level of awareness is amazing and so now we're able to have conversations around these topics without the kind of weight of am i being judged what are they thinking about the fact that i'm taking these medications but i actually find a lot more people my age today going into therapy whether it's like cognitive behavioral therapy or going on retreats or trying mm -hmm. acupuncture or trying to change their lifestyle or their diet 
to do all those things before they start taking medication. The other thing that seems to be kind of when we talk about women's health, there's been a real surge in uh, women and alcohol, particularly women, you know, kind of who've had kids maybe, or women who find themselves in their 30s and 40s, a huge uptick in that and that conversation around your health. Uh, do you hear a lot about that? I feel like that's all over social media. It's all over social media. All over social media is like, you know, drinking when you have kids, drinking when your kids go to sleep, looking forward to that drink at the end of the day because of the chaos that is in your life between working, between going and, you know, being a present parent, being a partner. Like, there's so much. Um, I saw somebody actually post recently about, you know, kind of going against that because so many people were posting about going to games with you know their children's soccer games and having alcohol in their cups or being able to go uh, after you drop your kid off at school and getting a drink in the morning like those kinds of conversations and somebody recently posted we see people doing this but it's actually not funny yeah. um, there's a larger conversation to be had there which is why do you find yourself needing to have that drink so we have you know in our family where I think you know not the same as everybody that we talk about alcohol a lot you've always raised yeah. us with a very open communication about alcohol about drugs about what that does to you um, also understanding that you know as we grew up that we would experiment with certain things and that we could be lucky enough to be open with you and honest and also have our siblings in that but also you know there is as you get to certain chapters of life there's seems to me especially since entering motherhood that there is definitely like a big push of moms being like these kids they're crazy like i need to have a drink and yeah. that's something that i see widespread across america How big a deal is it like, you know, you're at 26, everybody goes, you know, they're having to be responsible for their own insurance, like finding a doctor who's in the network, how much this all costs, uh, foregoing doctor's appointments because of the cost of it. Because yeah. I know a lot of, actually, it's unfortunate, I know a lot of girlfriends that forego kind of annual physicals. A lot of times because they either can't afford insurance or they're not getting it through their job. Um, I think a lot of them are lucky to get it through their job, though, too. But I think that just what you're talking about, kind of the advocacy and awareness of trying to find someone that's right for you. Yeah. But also something that I personally struggle with myself is, like, you have to be your own self-advocate. Yeah. And that takes a lot of, like, internal kind of fortitude and confidence in yourself because you can easily be swayed or easily be silenced in a lot of ways when it comes to being with a doctor or practitioner. And I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with trying to find the right doctor or trying to find the right prescription or trying to find the right PT or whatever it is, the right acupuncturist, is being able to really now at this point understand that you have to be your own advocate. When you look at women um, my age or women who are in their 50s, women who start talking about aging, uh, does that freak you out? Or do you think like, 
uh oh or um, I already I, feel like I'm having the conversation about aging, but I'm also, <laughs> you, you, I've been you like, are. since I was 16, I'm like, do I see a wrinkle coming in? Oh my God. I say to my friends, oh my gosh, these girls in their thirties talk more about being old than I do. I mean, we are really lucky that we have, like, we look at you and I'm like, that's goals, you know, like you Thank are you, very on top of your mental health, your physical health, yeah. your spiritual health. I think, you know, you and dad both are incredible examples of people who are aging with grace and doing it really, really well. I'll let Christina speak for herself, but I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm excited. I think like you, you you're excited to get older. Well, I think if you are given the ability to get older, looking at it as a gift, you know, yeah. like yeah. you, you talk about it in a way where it shifts people's perspective, not like, oh my God, I'm getting, it's like, oh my God, I'm getting old. It's, I get to get older right. and I get to be on this planet and watch my children live their lives and build their lives and see grandchildren and have fun adventures and have girls nights and, you know, go on these fun trips with my family and, and you know, also be there to be in communication with my kids as they grow and they find their own interests. Do you feel like there's, that we have an open communication about your guys' health journey, do you feel like you get all your questions answered or you know what to expect? Or Super open. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree. Like Catherine said, I think that you and dad are kind of goals and have set a great example for all of us as to kind of really how to engage with aging, how to embrace it, and how to really, you know, live life to the fullest up until like the very end, like grandma and grandpa did. Yeah. yeah. And I think also like we're really lucky to be able to have open and honest communication yeah. with yeah. our mom. I, yeah. I think we are really lucky that we can come to you and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Did you ever feel that way? Or do you know what I should do if I feel that way? And you have always been really open with sharing all of your experiences yeah. throughout your entire life and beyond about mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and just being open about it. winning actress Anne Hathaway has been a force in Hollywood for more than two decades. Hi. The movie star is known for her wide-ranging talents both on and off the big screen, from being an advocate for women's rights to a fashion icon. Feel free to call me Annie, by the way, if you want. And at 40 years old, the mother of two is embracing who she is. So a couple of years ago, you said, what did I say? when I look back on my 20s, I just remember being afraid of everything. Mm -hmm. And in my 30s, I'm actually excited about things. Yeah. So now like, you've entered your 40s. Mm -hmm. What would you say about it so far? I'm cherishing. You know, I'm cherishing. Um, I'm, I'm right at that point where I actually do know I have a much better sense of how I like to do things and a much, much deeper respect that there's more than one way to do things. So I really respect how other people want to do things. And I also am really excited about pursuing my own take on things. I'm so much better at sharing. Mm. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm kinder to myself. I feel mm. like I'm kinder to others. And I just, I don't know, it's, 
Can I get super nerdy for a second? I'm here for okay. all of it. So if you think about culture, we think about culture, mm -hmm. we often think about it as it relates to art, books, music, all of those wonderful things that are humanities okay. oriented. But culture is also a scientific thing, like in a Petri dish, like you drop okay. something in a Petri dish and you watch it develop. Okay. Well, the more we live in a culture in which age is accepted, not put down, not sell, not just that, but just accepted as a function of life, the more opportunity we have to develop as people mm. for like for the entirety of our lives. And that's a gift, such an amazing opportunity to get to talk about all of this as I'm living it, mm. because I don't have a lot of wisdom about it yet. I have 40 years of being alive and, you mm -hmm. know, hopefully I'll have way more than that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm trying to bring all the parts of myself with me wherever I go. I have a friend, we love each other so much, and we sit there and we watch our kids, and we have a phrase that we say to each other, which is, God willing, future grandmas. Mm. So for me, the idea that who I'm going to be, if I'm lucky enough, mm. lucky enough to be a woman experiencing age in her 80s, mm. I'm building her right now. And I get really excited about that. And that it doesn't mean you ever land anywhere. It just means you're always developing. You are just too cute to be true. Growing up as a teenager in Hollywood, Hathaway quickly rose to fame, becoming a household name. I started in this business when I was 17 years old mm. uh, in a very different era. And there was this perception that there was going to be a cliff. And that cliff was a really young age. Mm. And the world's changed since then. I'm like, whoa, no one's ever had as many opportunities as me. Mm. Like just in terms of just something as like how nourished I am mm. in my life, like just just nourishment and the education that I, I was exposed to. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to make it about that. I'm aware of how privileged I am. Mm. What I'm trying to say is I was invested in and I'm not ready to give up that investment just mm. because of a number, you know, and especially not because of a number that exists out in the world that someone else has a feeling about. I'm interested in my own feelings about it. I'm mm. interested and and I'm interested in defining it for what it is. And then I'm really excited for someone younger than me to define it for themselves mm. too. And in that sense, don't you feel like we've always been passing the baton to each other? We're all starting to say, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. What about what I think? <laughs> <laughs> what about what I think about what I want to do? That. Because I, love that. I don't know how you feel, but do you feel like you're getting better? Are you kidding me? Like, We're just getting started. I, you know? No, Thank absolutely. You. And I wouldn't you. trade anything. You get into a place in your life where you're like, I don't feel, I don't feel new in every single situation. I feel like now I can actually focus on other people. Mm. I can focus on how to take care of other people. I can take other people in. Mm. Whereas when I, you know, was first starting out, I was so nervous. And so, I mean, still nervous. I can feel it. For Hathaway, age is nothing but a number. Let's say on social media, I post a picture, or you post a picture, and people say, oh, you're aging gracefully, or oh, you look so good for your age. Do I say, thank you? Or am I leaning into it by doing that? Are we leaning into it by, think? are we leaning into the hype of aging? Do I don't we think about age. Hmm. But I don't. No, I don't. this is good. No, Tell I me. don't think about it. I never have. I think some of it was because I was a teenager who spent a lot of time around adults. Hmm. And as a result, I had to get really comfortable with the idea that I was a different age than other people, hmm. you know? And so, and, and the gifts in my life that have resulted because I was friends with somebody who was 30, 40, 50 years older than me, hmm. you know? And so I just... I just think that's people's way of talking. I, I think talking about someone's appearance is a really personal thing. To me, aging is another word for living. Ooh. And so if people want to pay you a compliment, it's nice. But also, whatever the hype is, I'm interested in what's beyond the concept of hype. I completely get that. And now I'm thinking, how do I put that into play? Who do we have on the other day? I talked to Michelle Yeoh. Uh, um, she's <laughs> awesome. She's the right? coolest. She's the actual coolest. Winning awards. Um, who else do we talk to? Jamie Lee Curtis, you know? And so mm -hmm. I feel like, and again, I don't know if it's just that I'm more aware because of the season that I'm in, in this 40 club, or if we are collectively showing that we're just, we're, we're still in it and there's mm -hmm. so much more. I think, and the question is, and why would you assume we wouldn't be in it? Mm. Why was it ever assumed that we couldn't be in it? And I think that, look, I, the world's a big place. There's a lot of people in it, but I'm really happy to be talking to you about it. And um, all you can ever do is be present with somebody and be supportive of them and uplift them, right? I, absolutely. You mentioned the word presence. How do you stay present? 
What do you do? Well, um, you forgive yourself when you don't. I feel like that's number one. I feel like the first thing, the first like rule of thumb in everything is just know that perfection is an illusion. And just because you're not doing it perfectly doesn't mean you're not doing it. We're made very nervous by the idea that we're doing it wrong. I get made so nervous by it. It's a really, I think we all maybe have a loud critical voice in our, in our heads. I don't know where it comes from. And that's one of the other great things about aging is you get more time to speak to that voice. You get more mm -hmm. time to heal it. You get more time to soften it and work with it. But like, look, I'm fully aware that I'm burst out in hives right now. Like it's one of, I get yeah, really too. nervous. I get really, really nervous when I talk. But you're talking about something so amazing. What makes, what's the nervous part of it? The nervous part is my journey. Oh. And so I feel like, and I don't know where it comes from, but I don't judge it. Um, I'm, I'm dancing with it. And part of it, one of the things that I do to stay really present is I have practices that allow me to be kind to myself in moments when maybe in the past I wouldn't have known how to be kind to myself. Mm. And so I don't think there's any one way to do it. I think some people pray, some people chant, some people take a deep breath, some people go for a walk, some people um, shop. Like yeah. I think I just think that or all of the above. <laughs> maybe a little bit all of the above. Maybe the connective thread through all of that is just do it gratefully. Mm. Maybe that's how you be present in it is you add something to it to allow it to play with something because it can play off of your stress or it can play off of your gratitude. Mm. And I feel really excited to be at an age now where I feel like, you know what, I'm not so interested in the stress part anymore. I think I tried that. I think I did that. I think we did our dance. But what if I can really set my gaze in the future on dancing with my gratitude? I don't know what's going to happen, mind you. I don't know if this is going to work, but I know that I feel better and I'm having a much better time and I'm, and I'm having an easier time doing it that way, if that makes any sense. No, it does. So then does it help you then, let's say you're juggling the kiddos or you're doing a project, like it, does it help you kind of be here now, if you will? There's so many things. I feel like there's, there's, there's so, so, so many things that, and again, it's like really, really, it's just different for everybody. And I think we're all looking for that magic bullet that's going to explain it and make it really, really simple and let it be clear. And that's, there's the line and you're either doing it or you're not. But that to me is, I think the quicker you can find something really funny, you know, the, 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 the more open you can be to it. And, and that's the thing It's there, it's never going to look a certain way or be a certain way or feel a certain way. It's all going to be happening at the same time. And you're lucky if you have a lot of stuff going on. And the question is, do you want to I don't know, do you want to bank your shot off of anxiety and stress or do you want to bank it off gratitude? Sometimes you're not in control over your anxiety and your stress and that's okay. But if you are in control of it, why not the other thing? Now, the movie star has taken on a new role in beauty as the global brand ambassador of Shiseido's Vital Perfection skincare line. Potential has no age. What inspired you to partner with Shiseido? Oh, I mean, it's always, it's always very exciting when, you know, you're aware of someone before they're aware of you. <laughs> oh, <funny. laughs> you know, that makes you feel good. So I've been aware of Shiseido for a while and I was really excited 
that they thought that I matched their values. Mm -hmm. I was really excited because uh, they're a company that's 130 years old. They have a legacy. I find them to be incredibly thoughtful, intelligent, caring, refined. And I was just thrilled and excited that they felt that I could be a part of that. I love it. There are a lot of projects you could take on, but this one it seems like you're passionate about in so many ways. I didn't know I was so passionate about it. Like mm. it just seemed like a really fun thing to do. And then when we got started to get into the process and discussing what we, what we were going to say with it, and then they said, oh, so we think the tagline would be potential has no age. Mm. And I was just like, I love that and I love putting that out there and then I'd love to see where it goes next mm. you know it's because all we can do is um, make the world better for each other for ourselves and for anybody to our, the best of our knowledge and to anybody that's coming up behind us and I love watching these young people who have so much more freedom than mm. I had I love 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 watching it and I don't know just imagine what they could do if they never had the concept of a cliff or a shelf life or any of those things before Annie and I parted ways we're lightning round ready okay okay are you a texter or a caller I'm both but uh but I'd love texting staying in or going out what are we doing <laughs> <laughs> a quote you live by I live by a lot of quotes okay Big wheels keep on turning, proud Mary keeps on burning. Just came I to my, Okay, I like I've it. I've been singing it all day. Favorite song of the moment? I'm really into Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, that's a good one. Break My Soul by Beyonce. Mm, that's a fun one. And Taylor Swift, Antihero. Oh, those are good. Okay. Standout fashion moment. What my heart is telling me right now is my wedding dress by Valentino. That's a good one. Which wasn't a fashion moment. That was a life That's moment. a life moment. Best advice you've ever received. Oh, no, not ever. Sound um, advice or something that, you know, resonates. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to sound like such a cheese ball. No, I'm no. so sorry. No, this is awful. This is awful. But it's really good advice. What is it? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, it's really yeah. earnest is what it is. I know, I know how earnest that is, and I know this, but I can't help but think that on the Today Show, you guys don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind it at all. And honestly, it's just good stuff. So good. <laughs> That's really good. Today, more than 20 years into her career, Anne Hathaway doesn't take anything for granted. To say that you started when you were 17 years old, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about life in our 40s, that's lucky, and I'm aware that I can't think of many people who get to say that, and I don't want to miss that. Felix, obviously. <laughs> One of the most. No, no, the most. The most she is the most, the most decorated, decorated track and time. field. So I just want to go back just for a second. When did you start running? I mean, were you like, hey, do you want to race me at like seven and just running down the street? Or I actually wasn't. And really? I, I had a different start than most Olympians. I kind of stumbled into it. I literally did not find track and field until I was in high school. And the only reason that I found it was because I was at a new school and I didn't know anybody. And my dad and my brother were like, well, you should go out for the track team to like make friends. I'm like, okay, okay all right. Wow. <laughs> and so I did and I fell in love with the sport. I found those friends, but then I did just- Did you find out you were faster than the kids who've been running since they were seven? I found out I was pretty fast.